It's a beautiful day in Oakland, California for the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders. Alongside Solomon Volkatz, this is Kevin Harlan. A beautiful day in the Bay Area, just about 74 degrees, a slight breeze, mostly sunny skies. We've already had the flip of the coin. The Chargers won, so that means the kickoff will come from Sebastian Janikowski, who had five touchbacks last week against the Houston Texans. And deep back will be Darren Sproles for the Chargers. Pretty important game early on here in the AFC West. Absolutely a long-time rivalry between these two teams. And you know, the team that wins it, they feel like they can really jumpstart their season, particularly amongst division play. And away we go. And looking up into that bright California zone, here comes Sproles. Belted on the play, Williams gets him, 19-yard gain. We'll spot him at the 22-yard line, which leads us to the terrific quarterback for the San Diego Chargers. Phillip Rivers had almost a perfect afternoon last week against Arizona. He has the offense completely in his hands, laser lock accuracy. He will spread the ball around amongst eight different targets, all of which are averaging at double figures per reception. His main target so far has been Antonio Gates to begin this season from the 22-yard line. First down and 10. He's got Tolbert in the backfield. McMichael offering a block, and that's just out of the reach of his running back. Coverage on the play by McClain. Let's take a look at the rest of the San Diego front on that offensive line. Dabrowski for one more week will be taking the place of Marcus McNeil at that left tackle. Next week, McNeil will return, but they've been very happy with Dabrowski so far. And all eyes on Antonio Gates, who has been absolutely terrific this season. He's averaging six receptions per game. He is the main man in terms of the main target for Phillip Rivers. He's going to throw it to him early and often. Nestor has come in on the second down and 10. Dabrowski with the block and down goes Tolbert. And a loss in the play with Aspawa right there of three yards and push it back to the 19-yard line. And now the Raider defense, Shaughnessy now will start on the defensive end because they have moved one of those defensive linemen back to linebacker. And that is Trevor Scott. They've had some injuries in that linebacking core. The rookie McLean out of Alabama is in the middle. Grimble used to play with the Cleveland Browns. And in the secondary, Asamoa is the guy that everybody talks about, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Raiders have gone to the nickel third and 13. And broken up on the play. Asamoa was right there looking for Buster Davis. So the Chargers. With a three and out, Solomon, to begin the game. Nice defensive play there. Now, are you crazy? Throwing in the direction <laughs> early on against Namdi Asimawa. But look, he forces the ball high. He actually gets a hand on it. And how about his ability? See, watch how he turns around to find the ball. If you're going to be one of the top defensive backs in the National Football League, got to get your head around, find the football, and make a play on it. So, so it's blocked. It's blocked it out of the end zone. It goes. The block punt was turned in by Rock Cartwright out of Kansas State, the ex-Redskin. Blocked it out of the end zone. It's the second time he's had one blocked this year. The safety for the Raiders, they begin with a great defensive play. Special teams have plagued the San Diego Chargers, especially in their games on the road. They've already allowed three touchdowns to return for kicks, and now a block punt to start off this critical game. Rod Cartwright just blocked that punt by Cypress for the San Diego Chargers. 2-0 on the safety, the ensuing punt after the safety. And Cartwright lets it go out of bounds at about the 29. That's going to give very good beginning field position for the Oakland Raiders. And just a minute, four seconds into this game, and already special teams, which has been the headline. Out of bounds against the kicking team. Oakland selects its option to take the ball at the 50-yard line. First down. Put it at the 50. 
And already a special teams issue for the San Diego Chargers, something that has plagued them in the first month of the season. Steve Crosby, the special teams coach for the Chargers. Yeah, he's got to get him going. How about Bruce Gretkowski? He is the straw that stirs the drink for the Oakland Raiders on offense. His energy, his ability to spread it around since coming in as their starting quarterback, the offense has really taken off. Now they're going to take off from the 50, first down and 10 right to work. Brad Kowski. And he's got his receiver, Zach Miller, brought down on the play by Oliver. The gain to the 36, a 14-yard pickup. We'll say with Brad Kowski, there's a nice rhythm to this team. If he's given time by the line, Loper's going to start for Gallery. Gallery's got to be hamstring. And so Loper comes in and starts once again for the Oakland Raiders. You see the weaponry right there. And Bush is going to start for the injured Darren McFadden, who was the number three rusher in the NFL out today with a hamstring. It is first and ten in the second play offensively for the Raiders. Michael Bush. And brought down in the middle. Eric Weddle brings him down after a gain of three to the 34-yard line. Gray now takes the place of the three-time Pro Bowler, Jamal Williams, who is signed with the Denver Broncos. Linebacker is a strong suit of this defense, although they've had some injuries right there. Merriman is suited up, but won't play that much. Applewhite will take the place of English. And you can see the guys in the secondary. Oliver takes the place for Gregory, who's been suspended. Second down and seven. And this is Bush and brought down on the play after a gain of a yard by Gray in the middle of the 32-yard line. And Kevin, you talk about the improvement of this offense. They scored a season high 24 points against the Houston Texans last week. Most kind of thought that that game had gotten out of hand. Looked like Bruce Kretkowski was knocked out of the game. What did Tom Cable tell us about it? He is a fighter. The way that he bounced back from that injury, came back in the game, put points on the board, has given this team hope. And on third down and six. Under the reach on the near side of Johnny Lee Higgins. North Turner, who was a one-time Raider coach back in 04 and 05, is on top here in San Diego with the Chargers. His record as a head coach in the NFL and with San Diego. Four consecutive AFC West division titles. Both he and Phillip Rivers put together the kind of chemistry that's allowed them to dominate this division. Now it really just remains to be seen. How far can they go into the postseason? So Sebastian Janikowski, who has missed two of his last three, the San Diego defense holds, but they do give up three right here, and the 5 nothing lead for the Oakland Raiders. A safety and a field goal with a couple minutes gone. Cable and the Raiders up by five. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Sprint, the now network. And by the all-new Volkswagen Jetta. It's great for the price of good. That's Das Auto. Well, they had a 50-yard field goal from Janikowski after a three and out by the San Diego Chargers. Game started on a rock, cut right, block punt. He's going to be the reserve running back today for the injured Michael Bennett. So 5-0 the Raiders in the first three minutes of the game and the ensuing kickoff by Janikowski. Sproles will leave it in the end zone. Cuts back to the 20. It'll be first down and 10. We talked to Tom Cable on Friday, Solomon, and he said if we want to be the kind of team we think we can be, we have got to come out and play well in this, our first division game on Sunday. And we asked him about the 13-game losing streak to the San Diego Chargers. He said we are sick of losing to the Chargers and all the perceptions that the Raiders don't know how to finish games. He says, hey, sometimes perception is real. He said it's up to us to come out and do something about it and change that perception that other people may have of our football team. Ryan Matthews is in the backfield. He's the rookie out of Fresno State. First and 10 for Rivers. That is 20. Matthews. Backed up on the play by Cam Wembley after a game of three to the 22. Yeah, the Raiders come in. You talk about long losing streaks against one team. How about the Buffalo Bills? 14 straight losses to the New England Patriots. And so you have to be able to break that streak. San Diego Chargers, 13 consecutive losses. Or, uh, I should say the Raiders, 13 consecutive losses to the Chargers. And the Rams, they seem to not be able to beat Seattle until last week when they were playing able to break that streak. You see how the Raiders are able to fare today. 
Sproles has come in, second down and eight for Rivers. Kowski with the block. Trying to get it outside, nothing right there. Asmoa throws him for a loss. Sproles can't do anything with it. Let's take you to New York and Greg Gumbel. Hey, Kevin, Tampa Bay and Cincinnati. Horrible day for Carson Palmer. Off his third interception, Connor Barr, 31-yard field goal with one second to play. That gives the Bucks a three-point win over the Bengals, 24-21. Kevin and Solly, back to you. You live in Cincinnati. What's the deal with the Bengals? No, I, I think Carson Palmer has continued to struggle, and I think everyone is perplexed as to why his game has gone south. Raiders in the nickel. Third down and nine. Dropped by Sproles and the coverage on the play by the rookie McClain. He struggled last week against the Houston Texans in coverage. He was pretty good right there oh, against yeah. Sproles. And, and look at this. You expect better protection for Phillip Rivers. Not the most mobile of quarterbacks. But if you can get pressure in the face of Phillip Rivers, force him to change his launch point as he did there, he's not as accurate. Oh, that ball was thrown at the feet of Darren Sproles. If he's protected and allowed to step up in the pocket, Phillip Rivers is going to be more accurate. Cypress, who had the last one blocked. And that's how there is Clark and picked up Hiram Eugene. Touchdown, Raiders. Steve Crosby. Wow, you've got problems. Right up the middle is that one blocked by the reserve tight end Brandon Myers. Brandon Myers, number 83, Hiram Eugene recovers it for a touchdown. Take a look at that one. Lays out and block it. Coming from the same position as the first block, you would expect them to make some kind of adjustments while the offense is on the field, and you can see he is hot. What is the deal with special teams in San Diego? Oh, right, he's given an ear for it. Oh, my God. Janikowski makes it a 12 to nothing lead. This will stun some people around the country. Two block punts, a safety, and a touchdown. What a way to start in the black hole. Raiders have lost 13 consecutive games to the San Diego Chargers. What a way to begin with two outstanding special teams plays coming into today. Cypress had, had only one punt blocked. And today he's had two in consecutive punts. Well, it really is, has been their problem. The San Diego Chargers, take a look at the problems they've had so far this season. And this is their third road game. In the previous two, they allowed three kicks to be returned for touchdowns. Now another here today, the fourth time it's happened this season. Janikowski with the boot. And this one is going to send Spurs about eight. Seven yards deep, he'll leave it there. Another touchback for Janet Nelson. One of the best big legs in the NFL. Well, the first punt was blocked by Rock Cartwright. He's going to come right up the middle and get the block. Now, that goes out the back of the end zone for safety. But then, Brandon Myers comes from the same location. He blocks it. Hiram Eugene recovers it, takes it in for a touchdown. So you get two blocks today. And then how about that? Four touchdowns allowed by special teams for the San Diego Chargers in their first five games. All three have come on the road. Tolbert is in. That's Hester in motion. First down and 10 from the 20. Tolbert coming out of the 100-yard game last week. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No game. They stay at the 20 to Greg Gumbel in New York. Hey, Kevin, take a look at Tennessee's Vince Young. Looks like he's going to throw this one up for grabs, and lucky for him, his teammate Nate Washington comes down with it 24 yards later. Tennessee on top of Dallas, 7-0, 9 to play in the first. Kevin and Solomon. Tennessee kind of coming together here, aren't they? Yeah, Vince Young needs some receivers to retrieve some of those balls. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, J.B. Second and ten. Got a beat on him. No game. They stay at the 20-yard line. I'm impressed with the energy and the effort we're getting from the Oakland Raiders on defense. Take a look at them. Look at how they swarm, and they don't allow the ball carrier to get outside and break contain. Last week, they were woeful in terms of their run defense. Gave up over 240 yards rushing for the Houston Texans. Tom Cable said they certainly had to improve in their run defense coming into this game today. Tom 
Gable took the plays of Lane Kiffin a couple years ago. Third season with this team as a head coach. Third and ten, six in the secondary. And that is scored. The flag is down. It's out of bounds near midfield on a catch and run at 29. Let's see what that flag is all about. It's against the Chargers. There was movement on that offensive line. Legal formation. Offense, number 66. Tackle is not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Reaping third down. Jeremy Clary. They're yeah, the right tackle. Clary's, he's got to be up on the line of scrimmage. Here he is right there. He's too far in the backfield, but boy, they leave a gaping hole open behind the blitzer. Philip Rivers, he found the open area, but it's going to be called back because of the penalty on Clary. Look at those numbers. Yeah, that's <laughs> surprising. Yeah, I should say. <laughs> and North Turner expects to be able to have more yards and more production on offense right now. Great energy on defense for the Oakland Raiders. Third and 15. Samoa working on Floyd. Another flag near midfield. That was a great reception. 34 yards. Samoa, one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. This is going to go against the Raiders. Oh, this is about as open as you're going to ever get against Namdi Asamoah. That was just great coverage. Maybe a little contact before the arrival of the ball. Pass interference. Defense. Number 21. That penalty's declined. Yardage is enough for a first down. A lot of quarterbacks don't go toward Asamoah's side, but, but uh, the quarterback for the Chargers does. He looks at him a lot. Well, you know, he's, a, he's an accurate throw, a back shoulder throw. See, there's just a little hand fighting there. I believe the official could have kept his flag in the pocket. I think that was fair. Uh, but it was a great catch by Malcolm Floyd. Sproles is in first down and 10 from the 49. Brought by McMichael, the tight end, brought down by McClain, takes it to the 47-yard line on a gain of three. And you can see the offense now beginning to gain some momentum. You talked about the ability of Phillip Rivers. North Turner is going to call an aggressive game, and Phillip Rivers is going to play aggressively. He's not afraid to challenge the defense. He's going to make you defend every blade of grass, even if it means going after a Namdi Asimova, who could pick you off, who could make a play. But Philip Rivers has a lot of weapons to choose from. Tobin is in. And he's fearless, isn't he? Speaking of Rivers on the second round of six. And the outside guys are really covering that time after a loss of two. And Tobin brought down Trevor Scott back to the 48 yard line. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing early in the ball game from this Oakland Raiders run defense. They were gashed one week ago. But see, contain it, and then you feel the hole. As long as you don't allow the ball carrier to get to the edge of your defense, then you force it to the line of scrimmage, and then you plug up every hole. Trevor Scott had great containment there, and so they were able to keep the run game of the Chargers in there. Number 31 run, run defense coming into today. They've been woeful, but improved at least here in the early going. Third and eight with scores in. And four scores. The matchup he wanted, flag is down. He beat the linebacker McLean. Gain is to the 39. Gain of 10 on the third and eight as it stands right now. Cleet Blakeman is our referee. First year. Holding defense, number 21. That penalty's declined. Yards is enough for a first down. It's twice now they're going to have a one. Yeah, yeah. Even though the pass wasn't thrown to him, he was in coverage down the field. You can see him working against Floyd. Just a little slight hold right there as he wrapped him around the wrist. Didn't need to do it. They were going over to Darren Sproles. He was matched up against the linebacker. And the line will be watching Floyd. Second play of this drive, beginning back at the 20 years. First and 10, Tolbert remains in the backfield. Brings him down to the 29. That's a gain of about 10 yards, close to a first down to Greg Gumbel in New York. Kevin Washington and Green Bay went to overtime at FedEx Field today from 33 yards out. Ram Gano in OT. And the Skins, 13 unanswered points, come back to beat Green Bay by three. 16 13, guys. 
a big win for the Redskins. Second down. Hester. Flag thrown again. This is against the Raiders. Raiders only penalized twice last week in the game against Houston. Offside. Defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty is enough for a first down. 92 is Richard Seymour. And right now, the penalties are beginning to mount up for the Oakland Raiders. One of the most heavily penalized teams in the National Football League. Only two flags thrown on them last week, but this is what Tom Cable talked about, needing to change the culture. Second most penalties, 35 coming into today's game, but that's one of the things they have to clean up. Right now, they're allowing the Chargers to have second, op second chance opportunities. First and 10 for San Diego, and take it again. Chris Wilson uh, Wilson trying to get a block and brought down on the play by Trevor Scott. No game. That's good about the 25-yard line. Now, we talked to Tom Cable. He said, hey, we have to improve our run defense. We have to be more physical at the point of attack. And look how they set the edge. Tober wants to get outside, but he can't. Too many defenders knocking the offensive lineman for the Chargers back into the running back. There's just simply no room to run. And they're going to have to play like this for four quarters if they have any shot of winning this ball game today. If you look at Lamar and Houston on that line, looking at it second down and 10 by San Diego. The Evans on the about time at the block, and this is Chris Wilson. With the tackle inside the five, it'll be goal to go on a catch and run on the play at 16 yards. Oh, I love the play calling by North Turner. This is pretty slick. It's okay, you want your tight end. See, look, he's here. He comes across the formation. He was blocking as if he was a pass protector, but then he was able to leak out across the formation. That's why he's wide open. Because the man in coverage ended up blitzing on Phillip Rivers and North Turner able to get his tight end uncovered and into the secondary. First and goal. Rivers, Wilson. Allows just a yard gain on the play down to about the eight yard line. The red zone area where teams really struggle to throw the football. Now, the Chargers, remember, they were very poor in terms of their rush offense. Remember last year, only average 88 rush yards per game, ranked 31st in the National Football League. When they come in to today's game, having improved their ability to run the ball, Mike Tober, as well as Ryan Matthews, you'll see if they'll put it on the shoulders of Philip Rivers. Matthews is in. Second Burris facing his way down inside the one and brought down there on a burst of seven yards. This is the rookie out of Fresno State. They traded up in the draft to get, and they love what he can do. Well, it's what North Turner wanted to do to improve his football team this offseason. Look at pounding the ISO play, leading Esther up in the hole, isolated on the linebacker, getting Matthews to the second level. They wanted to become a more physical football team at the line of scrimmage than North Turner. And they invested by drafting Ryan Matthews, helping the offensive line and the running game to improve. Extra offensive lineman Merchkowski right there lined up next to McDaniel. It's third and goal at the one. Tobit stuffed. McLean right there as they're fumble on the play. Mitchell picks it up. No whistle. There he goes. It's a turnover for the San Diego Chargers. And Mike Mitchell vacuums it in. A turnover for San Diego in the red zone. Wow. You talk about needing to be more physical at the point of attack. That's what North Turner told us when we met with him. He's forcing his quarterback to have to be a linebacker after Tolbert fumbles. Phillip Rivers makes the tackle. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by ExxonMobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges. So the San Diego Chargers, if you take a look at Tolbert, he fumbled right there. Two punts blocked, one for a safety, one for a touchdown. They just fumbled on a goal-to-goal situation. A horrible beginning for the San Diego Chargers. Yeah, and giving the ball up inside of the red zone as you're knocking on the door to get touchdown. That really can come back to hurt 
On the 14, first and 10, Michael Brown. And down by Burnett with a backpedaling tackle at the 20 on a gain of six yards. And support the NFL's a crucial catch breast cancer awareness campaign. Hit on authentic game day NFL pink products and experiences at NFL.com slash auction. Proceeds will benefit the American Cancer Society. Second down and four. Bush with a nice block. The nice time, but an underfell pass to Murphy. Rather than Hayward Bank, he was playing with a strained groin. Third down and four coming up. What do you know about the Greg House? Tell me what you think about his quarterback. Uh, he's feisty. There's no doubt about it. I think he brings a certain kind of spirit to the game that the other guys in the huddle, the other ten guys in the huddle can appreciate it. And then it's his approach to practice during the week and then the meeting. You can see the third down conversion rate for the Oakland Raiders on offense. I think he's allowed his office to go to another level simply because of his professionalism. Third down and four. Nichols secondary for the Chargers. Just the line. I don't know if it hit an offensive lineman or was swatted down, but nonetheless three and out for the Raiders. So the defense Reese does Grant their job. Looks like maybe Phillips got in his grill and knocked the ball away. Uh, the Chargers needed this to happen uh, because the Raiders are stealing the momentum in this football game. And now the Chargers defense forced three and out. They should get pretty good field position as Sproles is set to return this punt. But Shane Leckler, we know he can boom them with the best of them, Kevin. Well, he's number one in gross and net in the NFL coming into today. Sproles is deep back. Great punt. 17-yard line, one time a 4-3. It's by Eugene, and that was brought down on the plate by Rock Cartwright. He blocked the punt earlier. 12-yard return, 63-yard punt. Here comes Phillip Rivers down 12 to nothing. Late in the first. A lot of teams would uh, struggle with two black punts and lose the ball on a goal to go. Up in the gates yet, first and ten after the Oakland punt going deep for Floyd. What a catch! Downfield, he beats routes to the 17-yard line. Great throw by Rivers, 45-yard pickup. How about this? And this is just a great route by Malcolm Floyd. We talk about speed, the ability to get the ball down the field. Over on your right, snap for Routes. He's beaten right there. And you can see Routes is starting to grab him because he knows he's even and leaving. The speed of Floyd to be able to catch that ball and track it. That's what this offense does best. Phillip Rivers is going to find the open receiver down the field. He's not a dink and dunk kind of guy. First and ten for San Diego. Tolbert blocked by Wilson. Through the 14-yard line and a gain of three. Wimbley was down there with the stop. Oh, absolutely. We talked about Philip Rivers. We talked about all the weapons that he has at his disposal. He has eight different players, and that's just after four games so far this year. Eight different players who are averaging in double digits in terms of yards per catch. Have eight different players who have had an explosive play of 20 yards or more. So, North Turner, that was a big place for this offense. Second down and seven. Here they come from behind. They got by Dombrowski. Flag is down. Loose ball. The hit by Shaughnessy. As they unravel the bodies. Was it another turnover? They turned it over last time. Oh, they did! Two red zone turnovers to begin the game for the San Diego Chargers. Everyone's been talking about the play of Brandon Dombrowski, their left tackle. Pressure coming off the top from the blind side. Just a wonderful pass pressure in terms of getting to the quarterback. Matt Shaughnessy coming in from the blind side. And remember, Dombrowski is playing instead of Marcus McNeil. They're all pro, pro pro left tackle with him out. Dombrowski has played well, but boy, did it cost him there. Just tremendous pressure and pass rush by Shaughnessy. Gets the sack, the strip, and the fumble. That's the third fumble this season by Rivers. The first one he has lost. It's first and ten. Gradkowski hit from behind. That's a loose ball. Was he throwing? It's picked up by Applewhite on the hit down low by Phillips. Will that be a fumble? They say it is. Gradkowski was whacked and hurt after the hit by Sean Phillips, who had four 
sacks a week ago against Arizona. And this one, they may want to take a look at it because I think you I think, think, Gret I think Gretkowski understood he was getting hit, and he just got the arm going for it. Mm. And then the ball came out. Where did the ball land? At the 20-yard line. It was, and it was going <laughs> and forward. It was going forward. I don't know that that ball's going to jump out forward all by itself. <laughs> After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the offense number 60. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal line. First down, San Diego. Sean Phillips coming in from the blind side. Take a look. Now watch the arm. Was that arm moving forward? I think it was. <laughs> the ball moved toward the line of scrimmage. You can see arm going forward. Ball comes out. Gronkowski is playing with a sore right shoulder today. Now let's see how you see it. There we go. Okay, arm going forward. I think that's arm moving forward and not necessarily ball came out as, you know, as a result of impact. Oakland is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. Gregowski was hit hard last week by Bernard Power to the Texans. Licking his wounds right now, Jason Campbell is warming up for the Raiders. Welcome back. Take a look at the hit on Bruce Gratkowski. Arm moving forward, then ball comes out. You don't have an empty hand moving forward. The ball is in it once it starts to move forward. And we can show you from another angle that he actually has a receiver over there. See, ball moving forward, then ball comes out, and then you have a receiver over in that area of the field where Gratkowski was attempting to throw the football. That ball comes out and it moves forward when it comes out. So I know North Turner said, hey, we would love to go ahead and get the turnover. Remember, it was ruled a fumble down on the field. Tom Cable threw out the red flag, wanted to challenge it. It's going to be interesting to see what the officials say and how they view it. But I think by the letter of the law, empty hand, okay, moving forward. The, no, the hand wasn't empty. The, the hand had a ball in it as it started to go forward. After the review, the quarterback's arm was going forward with the ball when he lost possession. Therefore, by rule, that is an incomplete pass. Oakland will not be charged with a timeout. It'll be second down. However, the dead ball personal foul penalty against Oakland on number 60 will be assessed half the distance to the goal line from the previous spot, which will put it at the nine and a half yard line, second down Oakland. So Loper picks up the personal foul. You just saw Greg Kowski heading to the locker room of the Oakland Raiders like he did last week after taking a big hit from the Texans. And so this now brings in Jason Campbell, who came to the Oakland Raiders in a trade with the Redskins back in the late portion of April. He was deemed the starter and lost the job into the second game of the regular season to Greg Kowski. Now here's Campbell coming back and, in. And Campbell's a good quarterback. I think his problems has been hesitation and a reluctant spirit to really challenge defenses down the field. And Gretkowski goes out. What did Tom Cable tell us about Gretkowski? He said he's such a fighter. We have to do a better job of taking care of him because he was knocked out of the game last week, came back already, taking a punishment in this game in the early going. He's forced to go to the locker room. Now Cable has to come in with his backup quarterback in Jason Campbell. So it'll be second down and 18 as Campbell will have the ball at his nine. What a game we've seen. Two block punts, a safety, and a touchdown resulting. Two fumbles, both in the red zone by San Diego. Michael Bush brought down by Travis Johnson. He's out to the 13-yard line after a gain of four. If you are the Oakland Raiders, more than anything, you have to establish, I think, a physicality at the line of scrimmage, and you have to be able to run the football to help Jason Campbell with some play-action pass opportunities. This is how the Raiders hope they would start today with an early lead on a tough team. They've got it at the end of one. Charger coach Norm Turner told us last night, he said the problems on the road where we are 0-2 have been turnovers and special teams issues. Absolutely, and how about the turnovers inside the red zone where they could have had points on the board? 
Here is a third and 15. Bush to the 29. Brought down on the play by Paul Oliver. 14-yard gain on third and 15. Michael Bush is the real deal. Just simple draw play and leading Zach Miller, the fullback, as the lead blocker. And they get him to the second level. And even North Turner even said, hey, we almost drafted Michael Bush. They thought that much of him. The Raiders were able to take him before the Chargers could. Now he gets to start today. And even Tom Cable said, we've gotten longer runs, more explosive runs out of Bush more so than Darren McFadden. Luckler to punt. Scroll. Eugene was there, Rock Cartwright was there on that 58-yard punt, a 10-yard return. Eugene has got a touchdown today and a block punt, part of the 12-0 Raider lead. A lot of problems to begin this game for the Chargers. Boy, right, look at first four offensive possessions. Two punts have been blocked, and then they fumble the ball. Heads up. Tolbert on first and 10. And out to the 26-yard line on a gain of three. And you talk about their struggles. They go three and out on their first two possessions, but they don't even get the punt off. The first one is blocked by Rock Cartwright. It results into a safety. Brandon Myers blocks the second one from the same location. They return it for a touchdown. Hiram Eugene and then on two possessions inside the red zone. A fumble by Mike Tolbert and then the fumble by the quarterback, Phillip Rivers. And boy, the Raiders' defense is playing well. And Winning the game on special teams also. 22 plays, nothing to gain yet. Second down and seven for Hester. Deflected on the play. Incomplete, bringing up third and seven for Rivers. We go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Hey, Kevin, check out what's happening in Dallas for the second time today. Vince Young, a touchdown pass. This one, 12 yards to Kenny Britt, 17-3. Tennessee leading the Cowboys 12 minutes to play in the first half. Not too big a surprise. Tennessee has won their last 10 games against NFC team. That's right. And, and Tennessee Titans, you know Jeff Fisher's going to have this team bounce back. Seem to always be a very resilient bunch. Sproles is in on this third and seven. The nickel there for the Oakland Raiders. Sproles, first down and then some huff. Brings him down and brought down also by Wembley. 23-yard catch and run. And spot him at the 49. He's just wide open. <laughs> Darren Sproles comes out of the backfield. Here he is right here. And watch, he's just going to come wide open, getting outside the defense. And there is no one there. Look at that. Just no one within 10 yards of Darren Sproles. On third down and on any down, when he's lined up outside that tackle, he's coming out as a pass receiver where he can catch the ball and really do some damage to your defense. First and ten. Nothing to Gates. Tolbert was in and gets the call. McLean chasing first down to the 38-yard line. That's a 13-yard gain. Two quick first downs by San Diego. And now you can see, even though he's yet to complete a pass to Antonio Gates, haven't even targeted Antonio Gates, Phillip Rivers is picking the defense apart. North Turner starting to use Gates more as a, as a decoy where Malcolm Floyd is catching the ball. Darren Sproles, Mike Tolbert coming out of the backfield. And so sooner or later, you know Gates is going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they're going to hit Pater throwing the ball to him. First and ten. Tolbert has to the lead. Devoured by Seymour. No gain, staying at the 37. How about the run defense early in this game for the Oakland Raiders? Mm -hmm. Just the one thing they've done well. Now they've got to be able to match up their coverage on the back end. They're losing sight of some of the backs coming out of the backfield, maybe paying too much attention to Antonio Gates, allowing others to go free. Only 20 yards rushing so far in the game for the San Diego Chargers. Second down and 10. Hester. Clear the block, and that is caught Floyd. Belted by Huff. 
down to the 23, 15 yard strike and other San Diego first down. Well, Malcolm Floyd is getting open. He understands the offense. It's just a square in route coming over the middle of the field behind the linebackers. There's no depth in terms of the linebackers in terms of their coverage. So that's just an easy completion for Phillip Rivers. Look at Floyd has done catches of 15, 45, 34 yards so far. This Wilson is a tight end. So those catches that would go to Gates going to Wilson. First and 10 with Matthews in the game. Hester shuffled out of bounds by Huff across the way. And to about the 18 yard line and a gain of five. They've got a lot of ways to get you the San Diego offense though. And everything for the San Diego Chargers, I think it starts with protection. Their ability to protect their quarterback, Phillip Rivers, is not the most mobile. And even last year, when they didn't have a formidable rushing attack, he still threw for over 4,000 yards. And they come in today. North Turner's offense ranked number one in the National Football League. It's because the offensive line gives Phillip Rivers plenty of time to survey the field and to throw the ball down the field for huge chunks. Tolbert back in against the four-man secondary. Second down and five. Rivers right on the money. What a catch by Gates for the touchdown. His league-leading seventh of the year. 19-yard pass, and the Chargers are on the board for the first time. You knew it was coming, and you still couldn't stop it. Now he's caught a touchdown pass in nine consecutive games. That's an NFL record for tight end, and it's right down the middle of the field. Laser lock pass in double coverage against two defensive backs, Antonio Gates. He was a power forward as a college basketball player. Didn't he look like a basketball player going up for that rebound there? What a great catch. And says, you know, there's just so much you can do physically to expand your game, but mentally is where I've really tried to make myself better. Yeah, he has. And we talked about him being a college basketball player. He knows he's got the physical ability, but his ability to learn how to run routes and time up the speed, he can break your back on defense. Great catch for a great player. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Travelers. Insurance for auto, home, and business. DirecTV. Watch your favorite team wherever you live. Only on DirecTV. Call to switch today. And by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. He gets on ice touchdown pass by Phillip Rivers. 13 consecutive wins for the Chargers over the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, but you also have to be impressed with the way the Raiders started this game and, and the fact that they have brought great energy. They're trying their best to break this streak. You lose 13 consecutive times to a divisional opponent, and Tom Cable has his team coming out fighting. But how do you stop Phillip Rivers and this vaunted passing attack? North Turner's going to continue to dial up deep pass plays. Phillip Rivers is going to keep launching it. And when you think you have him under control and take away the best weapon in Antonio Gates, Rivers finds him inside of the end zone. And they were able to take advantage of that red zone opportunity where they had failed on the previous two with fumbles. So Rivers throws his 10th touchdown pass of the season. He back is the rookie on a Clemson Jacoby Ford. A 64 yard kickoff return last week against the Houston Texans, and here he goes. Upended on the play and then kept his footing. Flags all over the field. Well, Beyonce, it looks like he made the stop. He just was signed this week off the Arizona practice squad. There was a fumble there momentarily, and they continue to move the ball forward. Five minutes gone here in the second quarter. Greg Kowski is out. Jason Campbell is in. Interesting offensive numbers to start this game. Yeah, lots of opportunities for the Chargers on offense. Over 200 yards on the, on the air and on the ground. But they are not able to convert. Bush on first and 10, tries to wiggle his way free, gets a couple yards on the play, bringing up second. Nate Markham down at the 37. And coming up on the sprint halftime report, Greg Gumbel, Dan, Shannon Boomer, and Coach Cower have the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's the Sprint Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York. Second down and eight. Three and out on the last two offensive possessions for the Raiders. Reese is the lead back for Bush on second and eight. Almost picked off by Kaysen. 
Going on the wing across the way for Lewis Murphy. It'll be third and eight. It's just a great break on the ball. We're going to show you on our eye control and show you how he's able to get over there. Now, this one almost intercepted and almost comes back for a touchdown. Take a look at that one. This is what we call a pick six opportunity. Just make the catch and you're still running for a touchdown. Great play by young player in his first year as a full time starter. Remember, he replaces Antonio Cromartie as a starting cornerback. In the nickel, Strickland becomes the fifth defensive end for San Diego. Third and eight. Strickland just about had the scrambling. Campbell and out of bounds he goes. He's chased on the play nicely by Kevin Burnett. Another no gain. It'll be fourth down, and they got to punt the ball. Now, you can't necessarily pin this all on Jason Campbell. Remember, they had three and outs on the previous two possessions for the Raiders with Bruce Gratkowski as their quarterback. And so now they go three and out again with Jason Campbell. They've got to find better rhythm, and I think they've got to do a better job of being productive running the ball on first down. Leckler's front to Sproles. That is the second consecutive three and out for Clark 19-yard line. Eugene was down there with great coverage, 44-yard punt, and placed well. Last time out there, Rivers gunned the touchdown pass. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Miller Lite Vortex bottle. Taste greatness. And by Fidelity Investments. Turn here. And Friday on CBS, the murder of an off-duty police officer hits close to home in an all-new episode of the new hit drama, Blue Bloods. That's Friday only on CBS. Here comes Philip Rivers, the number one offense in the NFL, coupled with the number one defense in the NFL of the Chargers. First time it's been that late since the 50s. Cleveland will have to do it from the 19. Good little run up the middle, and that's by the rookie out of Fresno State, Ryan Matthews. Six-yard gain right there to the 25. Well, the Chargers went three and out on their first two possessions, but lately they've started to get some momentum. And I think it started with their ability to run the football. Phillip Rivers is getting the protection that he wants. And now if you're the Oakland Raiders, you've got to be able to get off the field, keep your defense rested. And North Turner right now is dialing up some great plays for this offense. Second down and four. Not a motion. Matthews following Hester. Kelly was there. Gain of three to the 27. Can we extend that conversation on Rivers? And just the ability for him to go through his reads and, and show the patience to do that. And what did North Turner tell us? He said he's one of the two or three best quarterbacks in the National Football League. No quarterback is thrown for more passing yards or touchdowns than Philip Rivers over the last two or three years other than Drew Brees. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not naming Brady, not naming Manning. No, it's Philip Rivers, whose numbers rank right up there with the best, and he runs the entire offense. He's got great experience in the system. That probably surprised a lot of people. Third in the long one. Scrolls is in. Pocket crumbles and incomplete for Floyd. Asmoa was there. Three and out. They got a punt. Tight coverage, but we talk about pressure. Really allowing for better coverage on the back end. Watch the pocket collapse around Phillip Rivers. Yes, he gets it off, but he can't step into that throw. And so it lacks the kind of accuracy he wants to get the ball over to Malcolm Floyd, who was covered very tightly by Namdi Asimova. Nick Miller is back to retrieve the punt from Mike Cyprus. Boy, there's a flag. It's going to be on the Raiders. Looked like Sam Williams came in there. Miller is banged. And he was hit on the play. Cypress is slow to get up. Boy, there was coverage. Mike Mitchell came through. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense, number 54. It's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Sam Williams right into Cypress. We've shown you the graphic. He's had the two punch block today. and. They are breathing down his neck every time he's back to punt. Watch Sam Williams, 54, nearly blocked it right there. But then he <laughs> sort of pushed into him. He was. A couple of guys fell into him. Now, not so sure because he had already lost himself for the block, but then he was pushed in to the punter. He was pushed right into Cyphers. And I think showing it on the big board here, many of the fans here aren't happy with that call.
so the Chargers will begin at their own 42 yard line and that does not look good if you're a Charger fan with Cyphers hobbling to the sideline. Well, we talked about the penalties by the Raiders giving the Chargers second opportunity second chances. North Turner this offense for the Chargers they're just too good Kevin to give them second opportunities you pitch a three and out you think you're going to get the ball back and now their offense is coming back on the field. Matthews is in with a couple of tight ends. First down and 10. Matthews a block. And Rivers Antonio Gates huff the tackle to the 34. Catch and run at 23, first down. I love the way Gates runs his route. He just understands how to sit down in the route, in the zone. And he would have just been blown up by Namdi Asimawa if he doesn't throttle down. See how he slows himself down and then watch how he makes Asimawa miss in the open field. It's just a great route. See, watch as he clears the linebacker. See how he slows down now, creates a window. See, and Asimawa, had he continued to run fast, would have had a hit right under the chin. But just good route running by Antonio Gates. Creighton is a receiver. First down and 10. Matthews, deal in a block. Tough the tackle at about the 29-yard line. Hard to believe that a tight end leads the NFL, Solomon, in catches of 20 or more yards, but that's what we see in Gates of San Diego. I think Namdi Asmawa put it best when he talked about Antonio Gates. says he has no weaknesses. He's mm. a pure route runner as if he were a route receiver. Excellent pair of hands. You can see the 10 catches of 20 yards or more, most of the National Football League. He's explosive. He's powerful. He's nimble. He's athletic. Outside of that, I don't know where you could give him a negative check mark. He can do it all. Second down and five. Good looking catch made by Floyd, who's had some long receptions today. A 15 yarder right there. First down to the 15. Working on Huff. Yeah, this team doesn't really miss Vincent Jackson. Yeah, he, he's a good football player, but there's too many weapons. Look at that throw. And the way that Floyd was able to extend himself and separate from Namdi Asimawa, it was as if Philip Rivers threw him open, threw the ball to the open area, and Malcolm Floyd just went out and got him. Rivers has no problem throwing at Asimawa, does he? No, he no. doesn't. No, he doesn't. He's going to throw to the open area. You notice he threw away from Namdi. First and 10. Nestor. Bounds by Rout. Just a kind of a jack of all trades as they work the ball to the four, setting up a first and goal, a gain of 11. Philip Rivers is accurate with the ball, even when under pressure. Lamar Houston came in and laid the lick on Philip Rivers, watching number 99. But watching the ball is going to throw with great accuracy over to Jacob Hester. So he's, <laughs> he's just saying, What do I have to do? Yeah, I hit him, but geez, I didn't force an incompletion. Patience, we were just talking about going through your reads. Right now, Philip Rivers has his team back inside the red zone. Tolbert is in with the first and goal at the four. The call easily into the end zone. San Diego's got the lead for the first time on the four yard touchdown run by Tolbert. Goes all the way back to the penalty on Sam Williams. He comes in and hits Cyphers. So they get a new set of downs. Philip Rivers takes his team right down the field. Hard nose running behind Jacob. Hester, the fullback with the seal block, and Toby just walks into the end zone. Look at that, walks right in. Couldn't even pull his flag. Tober goes in for the fourth time this year on his first 100-yard rushing game last week, and that's a 14-12 San Diego lead. 14 unanswered points by the Chargers. Well, they're too good to give the second chance opportunities as a result of penalties, and they're hard to stop. It's just a great day here at Oakland Alameda. How <laughs> the Coliseum here is just a real great presence. Is that our commissioner? It is. Roger here. Goodell. He was hanging out in the black hole earlier during the day. He's here today, and the Sunday night game is over a candlestick, and San Francisco will host the Philadelphia Eagles, so he's going to get. Two games for the price of one trip, and that's what we're seeing in the eyes of the commissioner, who likes to go around to every city in the regular season and just kind of touch base. And this is a good place to hang out. There's no doubt about it. You walk through and you see the tailgaters in the parking lot, and then you come into this stadium. The way the commissioner gets around the National Football League, you stop through here, and you can see he's received very warmly by the fans here in Oakland. 
So Kading with the ball teed up at the 30-yard line. And deep back will be Jacoby Ford. He was number nine coming into this season. A kickoff returns in the NFL so far in the early part of the season. And they finally get him down after he takes the ball up to about the 32 and a 24-yard return. Well, tomorrow on CBS, it's Trouble in Paradise as the 5-0 team tracks an escape convict. Catch TV's number one new show, Hawaii 5-0. It's tomorrow and it's only on CBS. So a 12-0 lead for the Raiders to begin the game as they were fueled by a couple of black punts. A couple of turnovers in the red zone by the Chargers. Jason Campbell takes over for the injured Brad Kaus, who will be out for the rest of the game. They tell us with a bruised right shoulder. From the 33, first and 10, Bush in the backfield. Blitz is on. Down he goes. Boy, do they come streaming through. Great play. Burnett, the former Cowboy, sacking him. Loss of five back to the 28-yard line. A great play. Now, earlier on the kickoff, we want to show you something else, Kevin. Look at Nate Katie. He's going to kick this one off, but he tweaked himself. Look, he's a little bit injured. He went limping off. Not quite himself. A little divot when he kicked that ball. Second down and 14. Coming in again. Applewhite this time. Campbell throws it away and hit the back of his fullback, Marcel Reese. That brings up third and 14. The linebackers just cause so much pressure for this Charger defense. And that's what Tom Cable said. We have to block their linebackers. Talking about the San Diego Chargers, their ability to rush the quarterback. Nine sacks one week ago for the San Diego Chargers when they were playing the Arizona Cardinals. And so the thing that Tom Cable feared most, getting behind on the scoreboard, and getting into that situation in the game as they face a third long where you have to throw the ball. 25 sacks in their last six games against the Raiders. Third and 14, they need the 43. Bush with the block. Zach Miller, the tight end. And he's got the first down as he was brought down on the play by Oliver. 17-yard catch and run by truly one of the emerging stars on this Raider offense. The quarterback's best friend is always a good tight end. You see him block for pass protection. Catch the ball out in the flat. Now, and he walk, watch him make two defenders miss as he picks up the first down. And Zach Miller has been the go-to guy. Talk about the other tight end outside of Antonio Gates. Look at what he's done. Already a couple of touchdowns by reception. Got an emotion here to a slot on a first and ten, but blocked by Reese Campbell. And the catch made by Murphy. Was he in or out of bounds? Incomplete. Caught it out of play. It's uh, second down. Kaysen was over there. He's taking the place of Antonio Cromarty. Sean Phillips coming off one side, getting pressure against Langston Walker. Campbell just spins around and gets rid of the ball. Well, you better make sure you have good vision as you throw the ball out on the perimeter in front of the corner. Nearly had a pick six early on. That ball was almost caught in bounds. Second down and ten. Walker had the block that time. That is Reese. He is brought down on the play by Jammer after a gain of four to the 49. They, they knew the Chargers did coming in. They thought they could take advantage of what they thought was a pretty porous offensive line of the Oakland Raiders. Well, it is about putting pressure on the quarterback. That's how Ron Rivera, their defense coordinator, is going to dial it up. And I do believe that, you know, the Raiders plan without Darren McFadden. Remember, he's a potent weapon, particularly a running back. Not only can carry it, but he can catch the ball out of the backfield, but they don't have him in today's game. Chargers in the nickel on this third down and six. Valdir is in gave the block. That's a fumble. And <laughs> that is Loper who caught it. Stop, drop, and roll. You learned that in grade school. That's like the holy roller. Only a little bit bigger form. And <laughs> Loper, the guard, 
<laughs> now watch it. And, and it was a smart recovery. It Usually was. the guy recovered it. It's his guy who gets the sack. And exactly right. That was Cooper. Now rolling forward. What is he trying to do? Advance the ball and pick up the first down. And, and no one touched him. And, and you don't waste time if you're a lineman trying to get up and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> that brings a whole other meaning to Roly Poland. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he was rolling. Taking the place of Robert Gallery who has a hamstring and he's injured although practicing this past week may come back next week they say and Loper taking his place. Isn't this where that holy roller play <laughs> occurred many years ago in this rivalry between With the this? San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders. That's well said you're right against the San Diego team as they find themselves shy by a body yard. And speaking of that it was back in September of 1978 they were in San Diego. 10 seconds left in the game and Kenny Stave remember intentionally fumbled after a hit by Fred Dean. Banizak then swats the ball. Dave Casper fell on it for the touchdown. And the Raiders won by one. A provision was added to the rule book right after that. Yeah, even Ted Giannullis in the San Diego chicken costume couldn't believe it. The Raiders going again with the holy roller. They know it all too well. How about going for one on right fourth here. down? On the 43, Bush calls it out and gains the first down, brought down by Weddle. And he's down to the 35. A couple of big first downs on this drive. Gain of eight right there. Raiders on the move, down by two at the two minute warning. Here's the two minute warning here in the first half. The Raiders on this drive, which began back at their 33, have converted third and six and moments ago, fourth and one. At what point do you start to use the speed of Darius Hayward Bay to take some shots down the field? First and ten. Good block by Bush, then he gets the pass. Weaving to the 19 yard line. Great catch and run. Brought down on the play by Cesar, 16-yard pickup and a first down. Just a wonderful play. It was a play-action fake. They wanted to go down the field. We'll show you in our eye control. Now watch this. They want to get down the field here with the receiver, but then they're able to just check it down. If you don't get open, have the running back get out to the backfield and just dump it off. Don't have a shot down the field. Get it into the hands of Michael Bush, and he'll do the rest. First and ten. Bush. Kept at it. Brought down after a gain of one by Sean Phillips, who is the reigning AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Timeout taken by the Raiders. On the move and down by two after the Chargers have scored 14 unanswered points. Well, coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join Greg Gumbel, Dan Shannon Boomer, and Coach Cower for the latest NFL scores and highlights. That's the Sprint Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York. Busy day in the NFL. This game has had a lot to it here in the first half. Big time possession down inside the red zone. Look at the first four drives for the Oakland Raiders. Only 43 yards. And now on this drive, they've got something going. Under Jason Campbell, who's replacing Bruce Gretkowski as the quarterback. He does have a big arm. I think he's just got to play within himself, be comfortable in the offense, take some shots down the field. Right now, Michael Bush is not only giving them yards, Rushing the football, his ability to catch it out of the backfield. He and Zach Miller seem to be the primary weapons when they choose to throw the football. Sean Merriman seeing some snaps here. Second down and nine. Timeout by San Diego. Wait a minute. Because you can't take back to back timeouts. And they did, I, I thought for sure it was San Diego, but no. Timeouts. We will continue playing. <laughs> at least it helped well, yeah. the Raiders because the Raiders didn't know what they were doing at the line of scrimmage. I screwed up. With the 18 yard line, second down and nine. Five defensive backs for San Diego. Out of bounds, nicely by Strickland on the fly down to the 12 and a pickup of five and stops the clock at 107. Campbell is showing good pocket awareness. He understands when the sense of, of, of when things are collapsing on him and then he steps up in the pocket. That's what I like steps up and then eludes out to his left. 
there was nowhere to go with the football. So he had to hold on to it, but instead of taking the sack, he got to advance it down the field. But I think they've got to dial up some pass plays that's going to allow him to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Three-step drop, and then ball out. The rookie fell here is playing the left tackle for Mario Henderson. Third down and three. Throws it away out of the reach of Miller with the coverage across the way by Kevin Burnett. And they'll have to settle for three, so the Chargers do their job in keeping the Raiders out of the end zone. Yeah, and the Raiders are fortunate because they they, they tried to call the timeout a couple of <laughs> plays ago. They weren't allowed to do it, but they were allowed to get things corrected. I believe they should have been called for a delay of game Absolutely. trying to attempt two consecutive timeouts. Janikowski has already made a 50-yarder today. We'll try this one from 30 yards away. Try to recapture the lead for the Oakland Raiders. And it'll be 15-14 Oakland. So a couple lead changes in this first half. I don't know if anyone thought it would be this close, but sure enough, with less than a minute to play in the first half, Cable finds his team on top of San Diego by one. And what I like is the fact that Jason Campbell was able to move the ball for his head coach. Well, this week on Showtime's Inside the NFL, two very special guests join JB, Phil Sims, Chris Collinsworth, and Warren have to discuss everything football. From the world of tennis, John McEnroe. From the world of golf, David Faraday. That's inside the NFL. Comes your way Wednesdays at 9, Eastern Time only on Showtime. Well, that's uh, when you think of the NFL, do you think of, you think of McEnroe? And you think of Faraday? I think it'll be entertaining. Of, I, I know a lot of guys out there who want to be part of the NFL. I, it is the number one spectator sport. North Turner brings in the number one ranked offense who can. He's talking to the officials. You know what he's out about, right, Kevin? It should be delayed. He game. wanted that delay of game. He said, you effectively gave them a timeout yeah. when they didn't have one. So on that drive by the Raiders, orchestrated by quarterback Jason Campbell, they had a pass reception by the tight end, Miller, 17-yard catch and run. They converted fourth and one, third and six. Bush had a nice long run of 16 yards. After a reception, so they move downfield. Now things shift to Phillip Rivers. San Diego has three timeouts remaining and about a minute left on the first half clock. Phillip Rivers, remember, we talked about yards by the chunks. He leads the lead in averaging nine yards per pass attempt. So talk about his high completion percentage. He's not dinking and dunking it. He's throwing it down the field. Here's Scrolls. Flag has been thrown where the ball was kicked off from the elusive scroll. This is Brought down by Tyvon Branch at about the 26-yard line on a 15-yard return. Could be offsides on the kickoff team of the Oakland Raiders. Cleve Blakeman, he was a backup quarterback at the University of Nebraska. He's now in his first year as a referee in the NFL. Is offside Blake. kicking team number 45 that five yard penalty will be assessed and real re kick. That's Marcel Reese, a couple years out of Washington, who plays the fullback, the lead back for this Raider team. The Tom Cable, he's we mentioned this before in the broadcast since he took over for Lane Kiffin, he's tried to change the culture, bring a little bit more discipline and, and structure to practices and, and, and everything about the organization. He talks about investing more time in studying inside of the facility and of course putting in the work and training hours and practice trying to build the right mentality for his team the penalties though still persist and I tell you this when you have a lot of penalties you're going to give really good football teams second chances against them and I think some of those have come back to haunt the Raiders even in this game today. Janikowski, who kicked that one short before to scroll. He says there are only a, a couple of touchbacks deep in the end zone. I wonder what he'll do on this one. Well, they should get better field position in at that 24-yard line where they were originally. Yeah. Do the same thing with the little squib. And Sproles, who grew up in Kansas City, will take it. Looking for a seam. Trouble trying to apply a block. A little extra pushing after the play there. Applewhite is in there. Working on Davis, and that is a 20-yard return. But we talked about the coaching here in Oakland. There have been a lot of guys that have come and gone over the years recently, since uh, since we've seen last uh, five, six, seven years. 
Well, there's no doubt about it. Going back, even a guy like North Turner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's yeah, the coach right, here. Right. He's standing on the sideline with the San Diego Chargers. Now they have Tom Cable. He brings a certain mentality with him. He hires a new offense coordinator in Hugh Jackson. And now you think that they're starting to put together the kind of offense that can compete with teams like the Chargers. Raiders in the nickel, couple tight ends for San Diego, first down and ten. Three timeouts remaining. And going deep, and he's got his receiver, that is Floyd, who has been a huge target today. Malcolm Floyd double covered to the 33 on a 35-yard strike by Rivers. Wow, and you know what, the cornerback, number 37, Chris Johnson, doesn't get back in time, and they're able to get behind him. They get behind him because they'll run the tight end in front of him. Look, this one's going to come clear over to the other side of the field. But you, there you see that cornerback, he, Chris Johnson, has to get back to defend. But they run a tight end in front of him. And so they're able to get behind him and in front of Branch. Just a beautifully designed play by North Turner. A career game already in one half of football for Malcolm Floyd. I mean, what a tremendous effort. He's, he's caught... Well, over 150 yards worth of Rivers passes this where, afternoon. Where did we tell you that Rivers was going to go with the ball? Oh, Down the field. Yes, sir. He's not going to dink it, though. 153 yards. When you play in an offense that likes to throw the ball down the field, if you're Malcolm Floyd, you're going to have huge numbers like what we just saw. Six defensive backs, and Scrolls is in the backfield, first and ten. Scrolls a block on the money to Gates. Covered across the way by Chris Johnson. He's down to the 20, picks up 12, another first down. When we talk about the route running of a big, nimble tight end like Antonio Gates, he's working against corner. Corner can't even close and get tighter covers than that. He turns as if Gates is going deep, but Gates knows how to throttle down the speed, give the appearance that he's going deep, but break it off for 500 receptions in the National Football League. Sixth most all time for a tight end. He's got three today. Last one for a first down. First and ten. Carry the point. Out of the game. Wide open. They had Creighton in the uh, back of the end zone. Incomplete. He was open. They're working on Chris Johnson pretty significantly here on this drive. Yeah, they're running routes in front of Chris Johnson, and he's biting. He's biting on those underneath routes. And he was wide open. This is definitely a blown coverage. And watch him. See, they both sit on these two. Now, who's going to go deep and cover the outside corner of the end zone? Were they handing off to Branch 33 on that play? Well, no, it was a fake. It was one of those deals. Wasn't a hand off the cornerback. Got to read the number one and number two receiver, but still cover deep. Second down and ten. Scroll. Mitchell can't make the first stop, and he is whacked from behind by Trevor Scott after a gain of two to the 19-yard line. San Diego will burn a second timeout, and so they've got one left, second 20 timeout. seconds to play here in the first half. I want to go back on that pass opportunity to Patrick Creighton. Normally, you don't see Phillip Rivers missing on a receiver who's that wide open. <laughs> no, and he was. And they got the ball. It was just under a minute left in the first half. Phillip Rivers, North Turner, they can move the ball in a hurry. Floyd had the big play, that 35-yard reception. And now they have another opportunity inside the red zone. Earlier in the game, in the first quarter of today's game, they had two fumbles inside the red zone. But look at the numbers. Phillip Rivers, 290 wow. yards of passing that in the first half. Amazing. Almost 300 yards. <laughs> he may get it if he gets a 20-yard pass here. But yes, that is very amazing. Six defensive backs for the Raiders. Third down and eight for San Diego. That was over the head of Floyd. Again, Chris Johnson was being targeted. Is there a flag? Yes. By the line of scrimmage. No, back at the seven-yard line. Yeah, it was in yep, coverage. You're right. Johnson against Floyd. River smartly throws the ball up for a play. Illegal contact. Defense, number 37. It's a five-yard penalty. Mm. Automatic first down. See, Phillip Rivers gives his guys a chance to make the play. He understands it's an all-out blitz, meaning single coverage on my wide receiver. Where's the best matchup? Well, if you got Malcolm Floyd and you know his dimensions, 
at 6'5", 225 pounds, you feel like he can make a play in a jump ball situation matched up against Chris Johnson. Rivers has already thrown a touchdown pass today at 19 yards. 18th consecutive game he has thrown a touchdown pass. Here he has a first down and 10 at the 14 and empties the backfield. Out of the reach, incomplete, looking for Buster Davis. Good Second coverage. Down. Yeah, good coverage by Stanford route. He's matched up. And Rivers is going to give the, as we said, wide receivers a chance to make a play. But Stanford route was able to jam the wide receiver at the line of scrimmage. Totally disrupted the timing of the pass play. <laughs> you can bet. Given the right formation, North Turner's going to take another shot at the end zone. But they're losing time. They better get up there and, and snap it very quickly. Second down and 10. Wilson is in. Flags all over the field. Wilson was covered across the way by McLean. Three flags. Wow. Holding. Offense. Number 62. The 10 yard penalty. Still second down. That is uh, Brandon Dabrowski. Well, he nearly tackles. I think Cameron Wembley comes in from the backside. I mean, he just tackles him right to the ground. Watch this play right here. And Wembley going to dip and rip. But well, look at this. He just pulls him right to the ground. He would have had a sack on Philip Rivers if Dombrowski doesn't tackle him to the ground. And you've got to throw the flag on that. Dip and rip. I like that. <laughs> it's a dip, <laughs> dip that shoulder and rip underneath. It'll get you to the quarterback. Nearly had Cameron Wembley a sack on that play. Raiders defense does their job to keep him out of the end zone. They do a really good job. Because certainly, Philip Rivers doesn't miss on that wide open pass to Patrick Creighton. Charge is going to have another touchdown. Well, the last time we saw Keating, he was hobbling off the field, and here he is now trying to put three more on the board for San Diego and give them a halftime lead. About a 43 yard drive for Keating. He's made eight consecutive field goals beyond 40. Make it nine straight, and the lead goes back to San Diego. 17 15 with a second to play in the first half after being down initially 12 to nothing in the most disastrous of starts for San Diego. North Turner's got a quarterback who can put points on the board with the best of them. Well tonight on the amazing race these teams are tough and tenacious and they know how to throw a tantrum a new amazing race after 60 minutes. It comes your way tonight and it's only on CBS the award winning amazing race. This has been kind of an amazing first half with the twists and turns we've seen. And it started with the special teams play of the Oakland Raiders. They blocked two punts, returned one for a safety, the other for a touchdown. That gets them nine points on the board. They got out to a very fast start, but Phillip Rivers is just putting points on the board and racking up yards faster than you can even imagine. And so he has his team at least on the on the leaderboard, they have, they have the score, two points on the Oakland Raiders with one second left. It looks like they're going to go in at halftime with a lead, but it's really about the play of Phillip Rivers. They're not running the ball particularly well, but he's doing a good job of spreading it around. So the Raiders who have lost 13 consecutive games to the San Diego Chargers. They've lost their starting quarterback today, down by a couple here with the kick. The squibber, as you can see, picked up by Mike Mitchell and buried on the play. And that takes us to halftime. So we've seen a couple block punts. We've seen the starting quarterback of the Raiders lead. There's a flag on the play. So we will keep it here until they sort this out. Offside, kicking team, number 27. One more point. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, and we'll re-kick. You take advantage of every opportunity you can get, especially Absolutely. against a team that's had the mastery like the Chargers have had over the Raiders. Yeah, North Turner's not happy, but he's ready to go in at halftime. And even when we talked to many of the Chargers, we talked about this 13-game winning streak against the Oakland Raiders. And, you know, they're sitting there and they're saying, look, yeah, we've won 13 in a row, but we did it one game at a time. And we never have taken the Raiders for granted. He said most of those games have been very close, hard-fought mm -hmm. games. And they expected that this would be one of those same games. Tough day for Steve Crosby. We've already seen a special teams coach fire this week, Miami. 
fired their coach after a couple of uh, questionable special teams plays by the Dolphins against the Patriots last Monday night. More than a tough day for Steve Crosby. It was. It's been a tough year. Yeah, <laughs> it they, is. They've allowed kicks and turns and touchdowns and other losses. And they've changed personnel. They've done so much to try to rectify those issues, but two big special teams play. One by Hiram Eugene, who just got that grounder. He got a touchdown earlier in the game. Nonetheless, Chargers by two at halftime here in the Bay Area on CBS. And back in the Bay Area where the Oakland Raiders trail the San Diego Chargers with Solomon Wilcott's Kevin Harlan. Thank you so much for joining us. We've seen a little bit of everything in that first half. Absolutely, and I think the key is for the Raiders, if they were going to do anything to break this 13-game losing streak, they had to come out and play with great mm -hmm. energy, and so far they've done that. Let's take a look at our points of protection today brought to us by Alston. Well, speaking of points of protection, first of all, you got to protect your punter. You can't allow two punts to be blocked in the first half two so far in this game by the Chargers. First time that's happened in team history, and they've got to keep it in the air in the second half. Phillip Rivers, 290 yards passing in the first half for a touchdown. they got to protect their quarterback if you're the Raiders. Bruce Gretkowski had been knocked out of the game. We hear tell that he may come back. Jason Campbell was able to finish up the first half. Brett, look at Gretkowski. He's back out there warming up, throwing the ball around. They desperately want to keep him in the game. He seems to bring a certain energy and a certain confidence to this football team, Kevin. We were told he was going to be out, but there he is warming up, and he'll go back in when they return this ball. So Kading has it teed up. We don't know the injury of Cyphers, who is injured earlier in the game because the Chargers haven't had to punt since he was knocked down. Jacoby Ford will bring it out for the Oakland Raiders. And tripped up on the play. Hester got him 18-yard return, and we'll spot him at about the 15-yard line. And here comes some booze for Gronkowski. I guess the fans at least like what the quarterback Jason Campbell did in his limited time in the first half. Sure, they're not saying bruise. Oh, okay. bru I'm hoping. I, know, yeah, I am too. But I think there were some booze. I think people were hoping that, that Campbell would be the guy eventually here, but Gradkowski has come back and let him again. Well, let's take us back to, you know, to the genesis of why Campbell even came here. Remember, two MCL surgeries for Gradkowski. He missed most of training camp with a torn pectoral muscle. So they needed Campbell to come in. He's got it first and 10 right here. Here is Bush taking the place of the injured Darren McFadden, who is inactive today with a little gain of four and brought down by Stephen Cooper at the 20-yard line. When you talk to this football team about, you know, the differences in terms of what Gratkowski brings to the table, almost to a man, everyone talks about how feisty he is and how he's a competitor and how he just gives the offense a chance. Here's what they've done so far in the game. Gratkowski only one of five for 14 yards, and Campbell did move the offense to get a field goal and put it on the board. Higgins, the fifth defensive back, five are out there for San Diego in the secondary, and the pass goes outside for Miller on that second and six, which now makes it third down and six, and the coverage on the play by Burnett. I think at some point, if you are the Oakland Raiders, you've got to decide. Gretkowski, what is he battling? A shoulder injury was knocked out of the game last week and came back and didn't appear to throw the ball too well after he came back in the game. And right now, he's struggling, going only one of seven. The team has only converted one of seven third down opportunities today. Third down and six. Jacoby Ford is in the backfield. Good time. And low to Higgins. And incomplete, wiping it away at the 23-yard line. Three and out is the way the Raiders start the second half. Gradkowski struggled even on that throw. We're going to show you a hit that he took. You know, it's all about the ability to slide. Oh, you don't get down. Bernard Pollard snaps Gradkowski. Took a hit right on his right shoulder. And then you got to come in and try to throw the ball. I thought on that third down pass to Higgins, he should have completed that pass. So I'm not so sure how effective he is throwing the ball right now. Number one punter in the NFL, Leckler going to Patrick Creighton, the ex-Dallas Cowboy, and out of bounds at about the, well, I thought it was going to be at the 44, but it takes a good later bounce to the 34. It's an extra 10 yards on a 46-yard punt. Here comes Phillip Rivers and the San Diego Chargers up by two. Well, that's interesting because Jason Campbell's warming up. Oh, Gradkowski did not look good on that sequence. He attempted two passes. 
incompletion on both. Seymour has got Rivers on first and ten. Seymour with the sack. That's his second of the year. The loss of eight and push the ball back to the 26 yard line. Watch a total collapse of the pocket right there in the face of Phillip Rivers. And Rivers just smartly holds on to it. We told you he's not mobile. He's not going to run away from anyone. So he's got to get rid of the ball quickly or protect it. Make sure you don't fumble it. You can see more times he can really take over a ball game. As he did in New England. Oh, as he did on that play. <laughs> Second down and 18 with Sproles out and Tolbert in. Tolbert. And from behind, he was hit on the play. McLean got a handle on him, catching run of 11 yards, and he's out to the 37 yard line. Well, you just love Phillip Rivers, and you know he's going to continue to battle and compete and have a man down on the Tommy, play right now. And Tommy Kelly. You signed a huge contract a couple years ago with this team on the defensive line. So we have an injury timeout, 13 11 to play in the third quarter. The open. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000 mile five year powertrain limited warranty. And by New York Life Insurance Company. The Raiders kids rookie zone. Out of the football experience here in Oakland. Tommy Kelly walking off under his own power. They have put in a couple extra defensive backs here, so we're not going to know who's going to take his place in the line with his see a third and seven coming up here for Rivers. At his own 37 yard line. Rivers today over 300 yards through the air, and his big target has been Floyd who has 154 receiving yards. Well, the fact is he spread the ball around, and I don't know who you try to pinpoint and say, hey, we're going to take this guy away if you're the Oakland Raiders defense because Phillip Rivers is going to use everyone at his disposal. Into the secondary, third down and seven. Gates. Mitchell gets him from behind, catch and run of 11, another first down on the play, making his reads. Phillip Rivers has been phenomenal. 290 yards passing in the first half of today's ball game. We talked about completing passes to seven different receivers, not of the deep and dunk variety, but that of a home run nature going down the field to Malcolm Floyd. And then up top to Antonio Gates, one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. Nine consecutive games with a touchdown reception from his quarterback to the first down and ten you see Hester and Tolbert is in and the call Seymour plugs up the gap and down he goes with no gain on the play and these receivers have been in the system for a while creating a sign I mean, yeah. these receivers know what's going on familiarity with the system I think has led to high productivity particularly for their tight end Antonio Gates. He says, hey, I've been in this system for eight years. He's been with Philip Rivers for the six years he's been on the football team and the four years as a starter. So he says, I understand not only the system, I understand the concept. I know what North Turner is wanting to accomplish every time he calls a play. And so now I can make sure that my efforts match what his intent is on every single call. Scrolls is in, second down and ten. Oh, that is dropped in a Buster Davis bobble flag is down on the far side of the field looks like it's going to be well, let's see offside defense number 99 it's a five yard penalty still second down it's the rookie out of the University of Texas Lamar Houston yeah Lamar Houston it's going to happen right up here at the top jump right into that neutral zone prior to the snap of the ball. So now second down and five. Tolbert back there for Rivers. Tolbert wrapped up, brought down nicely by Matt Shaughnessy. Got a sack already today. Loss of two to the 49 to New York and Greg Gumble. 
All right, Kevin, Dallas and Tennessee. Dallas went into the locker room at halftime, down a touchdown. They got that one back here. Tony Romo, 69 yards to Miles Austin. The extra point, they're tied up. Dallas and Tennessee, 17 apiece. Kevin and Solomon, back to you. Mm, getting a little interesting down there in Big D. Yeah, Tony Romo putting up a fight. He's talking about using weapons that you have at your disposal. How about Miles Austin? He's made a name for himself. In the National Football League. Make guys like Patrick Creighton expendable. Absolutely. Third and seven into the nickel. Make it the dime. Six defensive back. Bay. That was tipped. They were going for Gates, covered by Mitchell. Incomplete. And they can't get it to go, so they got to punt the ball. Seymour. Pretty they good on that drive. Yeah, Seymour, he just backs off the line of scrimmage. You see him get a hand up right here. Look at number 92. Fight his way back. Get a hand up. If you get stopped at the line of scrimmage while you're rushing the quarterback, you might as well become a defender. <laughs> Try to block the ball as it's attempting to cross the line of scrimmage. Good play. Last time we saw Cyphers, he was hobbling off the field, but here he is, the punt. Nick Miller is the back, the ex-Jet. Fields it at the seven. Dancing his way, finding a seam. Blockers ahead, and there he goes, the punter to beat. Ran into his own blocker, Johnny Lee Higgins. The way to the 46 yard line. No flags on the field, and the Raiders will get great beginning field position when we come back. Radkowski gave it a try. They're going to take him out again. Yeah, he was struggling. I thought he was ineffective, and so smartly and rightly, Jason Campbell comes back into the game. 46 yard kickoff return, first and 10. Inside they go to Lewis Murphy. They pick out of the University of Florida. Oliver makes the stop gain of three. After being knocked out of the game in the first half, Gradkowski started the second half. Look at this throw. Incomplete, not even closing on a third down play. Watch this one. Now, see, he should have completed that one. He threw it at the feet of Johnny Lee Higgins, so they're going to pull him out of the game. The heart is willing, but the body isn't able for Bruce Gradkowski. That right shoulder is just not right. Two tight ends on second down and seven. Push. Here's with the block. Tackle was made by Antonio Garay. A gain of about six. He's down to the 37-yard line. How about this? The Oakland Raiders have struggled on a short field. More importantly, they've struggled in the third quarter. In the last 21 games, the offense has only produced two offensive touchdowns in the third quarter. <laughs> for the last 21 yeah. games. So the ability for Tom Cable's team to start fast in the second half, it's it's really important. If they're going to break this 13-game losing streak, maybe this is the quarter. they got to put points on the board. Third and one, Bush. Boy, there was no place to run there. Loss of a yard. Back to the 37. Nice play by Cesare on that defensive line. Brings up fourth down. What to do here? Give a lot of credit to the run defense for the San Diego Chargers. Look at it. Nowhere to go. Every hole is plugged in. Containment to the outside and then a force of pressure up the middle. Tom Cable knows that he's got to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. He talks about being the more physical team, but so does North Turner. And right now, the Chargers are winning that battle. They're going to go for it. Khalif Barnes eligible there into your screen. Fourth and two. Bush. And gets the first down, it would appear, as he... Is to the 40, make it the 36 yard line. Very close to a first down. Cable saying, just one time, give it, give it to us. Because he wants to be able to win at the line of scrimmage. About the Raiders offensive line winning that battle to get Bush 245 pounds of man and muscle to be able to move the first down mark. Cooper made the stop. Huh, that's going to be real close. It is going to be close. Also, Applewhite was there. of the chain just that close San Diego will get it they hold on and they hold the lead halfway through the third the NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new action comedy red in theaters Friday and by AT&T rethink possible 
downs. The Raiders turn it over to San Diego. Ryan Matthews in the backfield. And you can see the flags. Tommy Kelly, by the way, who was injured the last time we saw, walked off the field. Back on there now. Encroachment. Defense. Number 93. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Speak of the devil. There he is. He just got called for that penalty. First and five now coming up for San Diego. Touchdown run by Tolbert. Touchdown pass of 19 yards. Rivers to Gates. First and five. Matthews. Hester leading the way. Nice stop. Come out of bounds. First down run to the 41, 17 yard pickup and a first down. Chargers are so used to dominating this rivalry, but we have a close game. Here is why in the first quarter, block punt by the Oakland Raiders against the Chargers. That's a safety. Then they block another one. Hiram Eugene takes it in for a touchdown. And then while inside the Raiders red zone, the Raiders are able to force a fumble. Then another by Phillip Rivers. And so the Raiders continue to fight, scratch, and claw. You can see the first four offensive possessions to the San Diego Chargers, two block punts, and then two fumbles after very long drives. Nothing to show, but Phillip Rivers is knocking on the door for more. Eats is out, first and 10. Go, he's got Floyd! Touchdown, San Diego! 41-yard hit. Malcolm Floyd's gonna have 200 yards received <laughs> when the day is over. You're right. Because so many people are drawn towards the tight end and here he's just going to come from this backside but look everyone wants to guard and defend against Antonio Gates and no one's paying attention to Malcolm Floyd he's hitting home run after home run against the secondary for the Oakland Raiders 195 yards a career high for Malcolm Floyd and Rivers with 352 yards wow. against Cable secondary ring him up wow Here's the extra point now by Kading, and it's 24 to 15, the Chargers, who were down initially 12 nothing. Floyd just caught that right there as a flag was thrown on the extra point. And they discuss on the field. Malcolm Floyd, who caught 14 passes in the first four games of the season, has caught six here today. Exploiting the secondary of the Oakland Raiders. And it's not that Gates has been a decoy. He's caught four passes of his own, including a touchdown. Yeah, but you have to figure out how you're going to cover Antonio Gates. And I think so many defensive coordinators, they stay up at night trying to figure out how North Turner is going to move Antonio Gates around at so many different positions. And now you're trying to defend him. And you have to leave maybe someone one on one against a Malcolm Floyd, one on one against Patrick Craig. During the kick. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the kicking team number 88. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot and will retry the down. Chris Wilson. So they'll do it again. So just think about this. The defense holds the Raiders on fourth and two, and on downs they turn it over. Two plays later, 63 yards, they get the 41-yard strike. Floyd getting it from Rivers. Just like that, the game just has a completely different feel. Miscommunication on the back end of Tom Cable's defense. We already saw them leave Patrick Creighton wide open uh, on a shot inside the red zone just before the end of the first half. And Phillip Rivers missed it. He didn't miss on that one down the field. I think there's a reason why Phillip Rivers for the, Rivers for the second consecutive year leads the league in yards per pass attempt. He's throwing the ball down the field. He's throwing it very accurately. Here's a look at Rivers, who has thrown two touchdown passes today. He's won nine straight as the starting quarterback for the San Diego Chargers against the Oakland Raiders. You may recall when he got there, they had a lot of different quarterbacks in San Diego. He bided his time. They made a trade for him in the Eli Manning switch. They get him out of North Carolina State. And now he is uh, not only the present, but certainly the future of this team. Yeah, if you think you can Try move on San Diego from a quarterback. The 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. So it'll be assessed on the kickoff. So they'll assess it on the kickoff. 
Extra point will count, which gives us 24-15, the Chargers halfway through the third. San Diego quarterback Phillip Rivers has thrown for over 350 yards. A couple receivers in the end zone. He has found seven total. And it's like that San Diego who trailed initially 12 to nothing on a safety and a, another block punt that was recovered in the end zone. And down 12 zip just as quick as you could start this game and come back and you can see now what they lead halfway through the third quarter. My old coach Dick LeBeau used to say that you make mistakes on the front end and on the defensive line. No one's going to notice it, but if you make mistakes in the secondary, the official is going to be holding up two arms signaling a touchdown. And that's exactly what happened with the Oakland Raiders in the backfield. And Phillip Rivers took advantage of it. There is a delay right now because our referee, Cleet Blakeman, is talking with the observer upstairs here in the press box. The 15 yard line is where this will come from because of the 15 yard penalty and the extra point. And they further the conversation. By the way, there are three officials on this crew that have worked the Super Bowl, and a lot of guys on this crew have been on other crews. So they created this, as you can see, Jacoby Ford there in the background. Because the foul occurred during the play, it is a live ball foul. Therefore, it cannot be enforced on the kickoff. We will enforce it from the previous spot, 15 yards, and kick the PAT. Okay, <laughs> this is like our third decision that we had as a result of this penalty. Even North Turner is saying, okay, what are we really doing here? So they do take a point off the board. That's why it's 23 up there. They'll yep. try the extra point once again. Chargers were in the paper down in San Diego this week, and the Raiders were up here being quoted saying this is their main rival. This is a rivalry that, uh, even though it's been certainly one-sided for the Chargers, winning 13 consecutive games in the series, winning over the last seven years, this is their main rival. Well, we got to remember when this rivalry first began, even back in the AFL, there at one point the Raiders had won 18 straight games <laughs> against the San Diego Chargers. So. The ebb and flow of this rivalry continues and they can't take any game for granted. So now it's like a 35-yard field goal. It'll count for one, and it does, which makes it 24 to 15. San Diego again is Keating. Goes back and knocks it through, and here is how it happened just moments ago here in the Bay Area. Yeah, here is our eye control. We're going to show you Malcolm Floyd at the bottom, and he comes here on the post. It's just a two-man route, and you should not really have any problems on this route. Look at this. Now we're going to stop it right there. You got one. You got two. You got three guys covering against Malcolm Floyd, but watch this. The other two guys, they fight on the underneath coverage. <laughs> Namdi Asmawa said, what happened to the help I was expecting on the other side of the field? Misreads and mistakes in the secondary will cost you every single time. Malcolm Floyd is a huge recipient of a drastic and critical mistake made in the Oakland Raiders secondary. Lack of communication. Absolutely. Chargers have won the last four EFC West titles, but beginning slowly the last couple years, and people looked at this year and said, 0-2 on the road, 2-0 at home. We've got to expect this from the San Diego. Yeah, I think the slow start this year, in my mind, was even more critical because you had lost in the opening game to a team inside of your division against the Kansas City Chiefs. But yeah, they seem to be finding their rhythm. So watch out. Let's go before. And you can see the bubble. That means those guys are going to be on him, and they are knocking him astray. And that's a tough one right there on a two yard return. And look where they're going to begin it at their two. Well, if you have money in the stock market, you can't afford to miss tonight's 60 minute story about Wall Street's new bet. Plus, a rare interview with Eminem. It's tonight on 60 Minutes, and it's only here on CBS. So, Grakowski's been knocked out of this game had a sore right shoulder coming in was aggravated by a big time hit from Phillips and here is Campbell literally marooned at his two first down and ten and Michael Boyce out of Louisville 
Yes. Down by Paul Oliver. He's been a role player. A handful of starts in his four years in the NFL and a game of seven. If I'm Tom Cable, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders, the golf coordinator, Hugh Jackson, you've got to be able to reassert some kind of physicality. To regain control of this game. You've got to pound the run game. Michael Bush is one of those big, pounding, bruising running backs. You've got to allow him to try to help you get back into this game. Second down and three. Here is Bush. Minimal gain and around his ankles. He finds the defense of Cam Thomas, who is a rookie. He hasn't played until today. They didn't have McFadden, who they can throw to, as well as find the run. Do you find that they've altered their offensive attack today? The week? Well, you had to, because McFadden not only is a terrific runner, he gets the ball out of the backfield. Before today's game, McFadden ranked second in the National Football League with 554 all-purpose yards. You take a look at the offense coordinator, Hugh Jackson. But, you know, you lose McFadden, not only do you lose a runner, you lose a receiver. Someone who can catch the ball out of the backfield. So, yeah, Hugh Jackson has to bring together, I think, a whole other uh, game plan, a whole different approach with a much more bigger and more physical running back in Michael Bush. Look at Daniel Loper. He's replacing the injured... Robert Gallery, and so now replacing him will be veteran Khalif Barnes. He signed Jacksonville. Third down and one. Oakland only one and nine on third downs today. And the quarterback Campbell will take it himself. And Carlisle leading the way for a game of couple yards up to the 15-yard line and a first down. So a little bit of breathing space after they begin this drive on the three-yard line. And I don't think enough can be said. Tom Cable talked about the reason why he hired Hugh Jackson. I think Hugh Jackson has allowed this offense to become much more productive. You see only the five first downs right now, but under Hugh Jackson, the first four or five games this year, they've averaged 20 or more first downs in each of their games. Anderson back in as the left tackle. He left for a while, now back in. First down and 10 provides a block in time for Campbell. Going deep for the fullback. Reese! He's got the catch! Oh, out of bounds! Kaysen was on him. Caught it, but caught it out of play. That was an interesting matchup. A fullback being tagged on the play by Kaysen in the secondary. Good call by Hugh Jackson, the offense coordinator. Allow Campbell to use that big arm to throw the ball down the field. And Kaysen's actually beat on this ball. And you know, he's a fullback. Ooh. And all he's got to do is just tight rope it. It's a good throw by Campbell. But look, he's throwing to a fullback who's not as nimble, not as nifty of fit to get both down and bounds. But Tom Cable said, we got to challenge it anyway. Did he get that second foot in bound? Reese, all he had to do was drag that second foot, and it would be a no brainer as a completion. Oakland is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Now we're going to be able to take a look at it. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's see if we can have him. There's one down. There's two down. Looks like he might be in bounds. What do you think, Kevin? You know, you know I don't know it. if we can tell there because his one foot is blocking. How about that? Can you tell with that? We got it blown up for you. Yep. We have the ability. That's eye control ability there. He looks like he's on the chalk. I'll tell you what, <laughs> the official is standing right there. He is. He, he couldn't be in better position. That's a quarterback that watching again. a fullback. Wow. See, the ref is right on top of it. That's his first guess, is that he was out of bounds. I think his foot was on the chart. I mean, he did a heck of a job to try to get in there. There you go. That second foot. Now, if he's a wide receiver, what you do is you drag that second foot to make sure that you're in bounds. See the one foot in. All he had to do was drag it as opposed to throwing it out in front to land on that right foot. If he would have just he could just drag that foot. Yeah, he's going to fall down. It's going to be a collision. But Reese is certainly to have a completion. 
field judge Mike Weir was over there watching it with the great position. And so that's what our review is about right here with five and a half to play in the third quarter in a game that saw San Diego trail early 12 nothing. They came back with 14 unanswered points. We've had three lead changes in the game. Let's take a look at Tom Cable. We talk about the ability to finish. Tom Cable said, yeah, you know, the perception is that we can't finish and until we change it, you know, nothing else is going to happen. And not just finishing games. How about finishing plays? Because Reese made an excellent catch. And the ability to finish it after catching the ball and dragging that right foot. Now you got yourself a big play. You've got a completion. And now you're battling in this ball game. And maybe you're able to seize the momentum back from the San Diego Chargers. Under challenge right now by Charger head coach Tom Cable. Trying to see if his fullback was in or out of bounds as he... Walking the tightrope on a long pass completion, which would certainly give this After review, offense the a charge. On the field stands. Yeah. Oakland will be charged with a timeout. It'll be second down from the 15. So Oakland has two timeouts, and I did think he was on the chalk, and it's incomplete. Good try, though, None, nonetheless. Yeah. A very good attempt by the fullback, Marcel Reese. Reese has to finish the play. Initial catch is good. But the ability to finish, drag that foot, and you got yourself a first down. Nichols secondary, second down and ten. Bush. And hit by a handful, including Burnett, who finishes him off at the 21. Pickup of six as we pick up Greg Gumbel from New York. Hey, Kevin, the defending Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints in trouble at Arizona. Liddell Betts fumbles. Kerry Rhodes recovers 27 yards in the touchdown. Arizona leads it by 10, coming up on six minutes to play in the fourth quarter at Arizona. Guys? Rhodes had a touchdown against these Chargers last week for Arizona. Absolutely. He was able to recover, fumble, and took it in for a touchdown. Now making another big play against the New Orleans Saints. Third and four. Good block by Henderson. That's caught on the play. Lewis Murphy, foot race into Weddell. Great catch and run all the way to the 14-yard line. And you love the throw from Jason Camp. He just zipped this one right through the secondary. Take a look on our eye control. And he's going to be coming across the top of the field, right over the middle of it. And watch this throw. Look at that. Right between the linebackers. Is that perfect or what? Great accuracy and great catch and run by Lewis Murphy. They'll mark him out at the 21 with a 58-yard catch and run. That is the longest play allowed by that San Diego defense this season. First and 10. 21-yard line of the Chargers. Bush. And a gain of four as he's down to the 17-yard line. And now we're getting some aggressive play calling by Hugh Jackson, the offense coordinator for the Oakland Raiders. He knows he's got to be aggressive to match what Phillip Rivers and North Turner are doing on the other side of the field. They go down the field to Marcel Reese. They're not able to make the completion. What does Hugh Jackson do? He dials up another one. Lewis Murphy deep across the middle. And now they have this Charger defense back on their heels, knocking on the door inside the red zone. Murphy had 119 receiving yards so we could go and back to pass goes the quarterback Campbell on second and six Bush for three make it four on the play jammer among a couple there to bring him down well, that's a play where Hugh Jackson if you're the coordinator you'd love to have Darren McFadden at your disposal because Bush is a bigger back but watch the catch now watch him in the open fields he's as nimble as you want to make big guys miss not quite but certainly you know he's good in between the tackles but personnel is very important for an offense coordinator putting players in a position to succeed the faster McFadden probably breaks that one in for a touchdown timeout by Campbell now the Raiders left with one as they were facing third down and two Last week, the Raiders worked a ton on the red zone. They were 3-3 three three against the Houston Texans. Don't miss fantasy football today. Post game live tonight, 7.30 Eastern. Web's only Sunday night fantasy post game show is on CBSSports.com. We'll be filing a report for that. So it is third and two. 
Second timeout used by the Oakland Raiders. They lost the first on a missed challenge. So they got one remaining in the half, and they're at the 13-yard line of San Diego. Now, what do you want to do inside the red zone? If you take a look at third down conversions on this drive, two for two for Jason Campbell and the Oakland Raiders. I think you've got to find a way to get the matchup advantage with your tight end, Zach Miller. He's been deadly inside the red zone. The quarterback's completion percentage and overall rating has gone through the roof when you throw the ball to Zach Miller. Miller's only got two passes today. Third and two. Nickel secondary for San Diego, and they blow that dead. Ball start, offense, number 69, five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's Khalif Barnes taking the place of the injured guard, Daniel Open. Got to hold your water. These penalties mm -hmm. continue to haunt and plague Tom Cable's Raiders. The eighth penalty of the day, 54 yards. It might even give them a little bit more room to operate on the back edge of that end zone. Well, what Tom Cable tell you talking about Miller moments ago, they said he's been very good in the red zone. So watch number 80 for the Raiders. Third down and seven. Into the nickel. Push. Knocked down by Burnett. Catch and run to the seven. He's got the first down and picks up 11 yards on the play. How about Bush? He's a pound of guy. Yards after contact. And Campbell smartly just dumps this one off because the Charger secondary had that end zone well covered. So you run everybody off and hit your check down and about Bush picking up the first down. First and goal. Bush, Carlisle a block. Merriman was there to the three and a game of three. Very critical drive for the Oakland Raiders. They've converted third downs into first downs three times on this drive. So give Jason Campbell some credit. He has settled in. To this position he is showing improvement in this game more so than what we saw from him in the first two games of the season when he lost his starting job to Bruce Gretkowski more of turn of concern see if they pound the running game or go with the play action pass 11 play of the drive second goal at the four push steamrolls to the one game of a couple both coaches said they wanted to be more physical at the point of attack that they had to win the physical battle in the trenches. So whether it's Samson to Telly, Loper, the left guard. 68 is reporting eligible. Number 68 is eligible. Held here. Or Cooper Carlisle, the interior guys on the offensive line. Can they eat out one more yard? Critical third down play. Third and goal at the one. Blocked by Bush. Touchdown. Miller. I like what I see from Jason Campbell. Because Jason Campbell uncovers Zach Miller. He was covered initially. But then watch as he rolls out to his right. See, this is going to be covered. See, you can't throw it now. But then watch the pump fake. And that uncovers Zach Miller on the back edge. The pump fake and then pretending as if he were going to run it. It uncovered his tight end, allowing him room for the touchdown I pass. don't think he got the other foot down. I don't. And watching that replay right there, I don't know if he got his right foot in. And the Chargers have challenged. I think he landed on his hip before that right foot hit the end zone. San Diego is challenging the ruling on the field that is a completed catch for a touchdown. We said that Zach Miller would be the intended target down inside the red zone. There's the catch. One. There's one foot in there. Elbow. Elbow. elbow that, hits. that constitutes. It sure does. That constitutes a touchdown right there. The elbow. But was the elbow in? We, I don't know if we saw it all the way. I think the elbow's in. Down. If the elbow's in, that's that's equivalent 
to that second foot if it is in. You be the judge. This is a pretty good angle right here. That, see that forearm hit and then the elbow. Well. <laughs> The right hand hit, hit, hand hit. I don't know that the elbow. Remember, it was ruled a touchdown on the field. Do you have anything conclusive enough to overturn it? Do you see anything that tells you that's not a touchdown? If we, you know, we talked to Bill Belichick about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, we have to use a replay to tell us if that's a touchdown or not. Do we need slow motion and everything else to tell us if that's a touchdown? I would say yes, because <laughs> you can see right there. I, that I, elbow. Would say, I would say no. I would mm. say one foot in, his hand touches in. His hand hits the ground. Right there. His hand hits even before the elbow hits. You make contact with a foot and a hand. In my mind, that's a touchdown. I know what the rules say. The rule it's says a touchdown. Elbow. I think the elbow hit the chalk. But the hand was inbound before elbow hit chalk. It was. Oh, he got his left knee down the end zone. Therefore, by rule, it is a touchdown. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Let's take a look at that I, knee. See, sometimes you just go by what you see, and you don't have to become over litigious trying to figure out if it's a touchdown or not. Sebastian Janikowski will attempt the extra point. Look, boom. Boom. Touchdown. He said, and what Almost they're saying, simultaneous. what they're saying is the foot and then the knee hit inside the end zone they don't even have to get as far as the hand i think it was clear in my mind even initially it was a touchdown it looked like the knee and the elbow hit at the same time nonetheless they give him six and here is number seven and the raiders are back in business with 112 to play in the third and down by two that is the longest touchdown ride by the Raider offense since 1997, 97 yards. Wow. Well, this is the rival for both these teams. Let's go back to 1960. The Raiders against the Los Angeles Chargers. Al Davis was the receivers coach for the Chargers. Tom Flores was the quarterback for the Raiders. Chargers quarterback Jack Kemp threw for over 300 yards and a pair of touchdowns while running back all low rushed for 149 yards and a score. Chargers won that first meeting 52 to 28. So how about like that? I said before these two teams think they are the number one rival in each book. The greatest Raider of them all. Al Davis has been on both sides of the rivalry starting his career with the L.A. Chargers and it was Al Davis who was instrumental in signing Lance Allworth to the Chargers. Remember, a lot of teams in the NFL wanted the Hall of Fame wide receiver, and Al Davis goes out and recruits. There's Al Davis there. He recruits Lance Allworth and coached him as the wide receiver's coach for the L.A. Chargers. So, <laughs> Al Davis was a great man of the National Football League. Remember, it was his Raiders that at one time won 18 straight over the Chargers. Another touchback. Third today by Janikowski. At five last week, he's at eight in less than two games. You take a look at Jack Miller, who kind of like Gates has been for San Diego's offense, the tight end, becoming kind of the focal point of what these offenses try to do. You talk about some of the other really good tight ends in the National Football League, Antonio Gates, and Jason Witten in Dallas. And I think Zach Miller is probably one of the best tight ends you have never heard of because he's been on an offense that's been struggling. But Hugh Jackson come in, lift the offense. You can see now, ball in the hands of Philip Rip. Over 300 yards passing so far in the game. Two tight ends, Matthews is in, first down and 10. Gates had the matchup he wanted against Cam Wimbley and beats him on the side. The gain to the 48, the catch him on for 28 and a charger first down. It's still about what they're doing in the secondary. Yes, Cam Wimbley is in chase, but he's got to have some front side protection in the coverage. Okay, now he gets turned around and really lose sight of Antonio Gates, something that should never happen. If you're forced to stay outside and have that kind of positioning on Gates, you can't allow him to get outside. Been targeted six times and has caught the ball five times for 92 yards in the game. Pretty good ratio. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> like 99 percent. 
<laughs> First and ten. Wow. Going deep, and he's got the. And there's a flag thrown. Floyd was in the sights. Asamoah was defending. Flag is down at the 20 where the route was being run. Wow. Yeah, this is like a phantom holding call of some sort. <laughs> it came out way late and the ball was well overthrown. It's on Asamoah. They're saying it's illegal contact against number 21. Namdi Asamoah. And Namdi is saying how I was stacked on top. I got to see it again but initially I didn't see how the receivers route toward the end zone have been impeded by Namdi Asamoah. Well for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes you're watching the NFL on CBS the game between the San Diego Chargers and the Oakland Raiders. Kevin Harlan with Solomon Wilcox. We have a two point game here. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game except on the West Coast. First and 10 from the 47. Seymour. Jumping. Is he induced? Encroachment. Defense number 92. It's a five yard penalty. Still first down. Ten penalties now yes, ten. in this game against the Oakland Raiders. And much of the criticism coming into today's game is how they couldn't finish. Well, part of it is that they tend to shoot themselves in the foot. With those kinds of mistakes, we talked about the fact you can't give Phillip Rivers in this potent offense second chances. You give them a new set of downs, first down. How about first and five for Phillip Rivers? More of Turner dialing up even more deep throws for his quarterback. First and five, Ryan Matthews. Golfed at about the 38 yard line on a gain of three. They like this guy. He's fumbled the ball a little bit though did not start today Tolbert was the guy in the opening line. He is a really good player and I think they're smart to playing behind Tolbert. I think you're going to need him healthy in the month of December late in games particularly as they get into the postseason because that is their plan. But if you give North Turner a balanced offense in the postseason this could be the year in San Diego. Phillip Rivers has thrown for almost 400 yards and two touchdowns. A lot of lead changes at the end of three. The Chargers by two on CBS. We're starting the fourth quarter, second down and two for the San Diego Chargers with Matthews in the backfield from the Oakland 39. Hester, Dealman a block, getting the first down to about the 32 and a pickup of six. Good way to start the fourth for San Diego. Well, you trail by two. Jason Campbell takes his team on a very long drive of 90 plus yards to get the touchdown and if you're the Oakland Raiders it's about time to start playing some defense against North Turner and Phillip Rivers look at the number of first downs for the San Diego Chargers it's up to the defense to help the Raiders finish this ball game and close it out with a win. Creighton is in Gates is out first and ten. Going for Creighton coverage by route. Second and ten. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Kevin and Solly out in Arizona. New Orleans maybe with a little too little too late. Drew Brees escapes the pressure. 35 yard touchdown to Robert Meacham. 23 20. But Arizona with the football coming up on a minute to play in regulation guys. Saints play close to the edge it seems like every game. And Drew oh, Brees wow. is going to keep pulling the trigger Greg. <laughs> he, he may not be done yet. Second and ten. Matthews. Good block by Dombrowski. Tackle made by Huff. Argument about the 18 yard line on that second down and 10. 15 yard pickup another. The Raiders defense was gassed for 249 rush yards one week ago. Now watch him go here and then look at that. It's just a wonderful run because the white jerseys continue to just stay on a black jersey. Huff is left and they have brought in rookie Stevie Brown the Raiders have in the second day. First and ten. Brown started back at the 20. Matthews. Running the green. Wrap 
picked up on the play by Wimbley, being a two to the 16. Chargers continue to do the right thing, pound away with the run game. The Oakland Raiders, their run defense come in ranked second to last in terms of their inability to stop the run. Look at the red zone possessions today for North Turner's Chargers offense. There's been some misses, a couple of fumbles down inside the red zone. And he loves to stick with the running game. That's where people have been able to chip away at this Raiders defense. But boy, if they drop coverage on the back end today. Sproles in second down and eight. Sproles, Dealman held his guy. Seymour at the line. Then the great pursuit brings him down. And McLean allows no gain on the play. They stay at the 16. So the Raiders run defense stiffened inside the red zone. And I think if you're the Oakland Raiders right now in this third down play, facing third day against Phillip Rivers, you already shut them down on first and second down. Be smart on the back end. Don't drop coverage. Defend the end zone. Let them catch it in front of you. Make a tackle short of the first down mark. Third and nine. Good block by Dombrowski. Incomplete for Buster Davis. Coverage by Rout. Fourth down, they're going to be relegated to a three-point try. Nice defensive stand by the Oakland D. Good coverage. Phillip Rivers wants to cross him. That's where he wants to go with the ball. Now, he knows he's got to be able to hit Buster Davis. That's just an incompleted pass on Phillip Rivers. Didn't have good footwork on that one. But I think he had separation against Rout. He's got to be able to hit Buster Davis on the crossing route. 34 yard drive by Nate Caden out of Iowa. And the Charger lead is extended. 27 22. 12 to play in the game. Big play on that drive. A 28 yard catch and run by Antonio Gates. And tonight on CBS, all new, beginning with 60 minutes, followed by new episodes of The Amazing Race, Undercover Boss, and CSI Miami. That's tonight only on. CBS. So it's still a one score game and the good defense by the Raiders right there holds them out of the end zone and relegates the San Diego Chargers to the 34 yard field. Very impressed with the Raiders defense on that red zone stand. It was the penalties by the Raiders on defense that allowed Phillip Rivers to mount a drive but they force only a field goal. Now Jason Campbell's going to have a shot to put some points on the board. And Jacoby Ford is deep back for the Raiders on the Keating kickoff from the six yard line. Out of room and brought down on the player, pushed out of bounds at least by Keon Wilson. 21 yard return. So Jason Campbell with those numbers taking the place of the starter, Gradkowski, down by five. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Ford Edge. The world has never seen a crossover quite like this. Bing. Stop searching, start deciding with Bing, the decision engine from Microsoft and by Warner Brothers Pictures hereafter. In theaters everywhere October 22nd. Beautiful afternoon here on the Bay Area. Under 12 to play. Keating just knocked in a 34-yard field goal. Here's a first and 10 for quarterback Casey Campbell. Reese, the fullback. Right down around the head right there, as you saw. That's a gain of three. Put him at the 30, and Phillips is all over him on the play. But still a smart play. You're either going to run it, on first down, but if you got to throw it, it got to be of the three step and get the ball out variety. <laughs> he just hog tied him, got him down to the ground. Good physical nature tackle. Thompson Johnson on that defensive line on the second down and seven push. Upended in the secondary by Paul Oliver. That's a gain of about seven yards, close to a first down. Let's go to Greg Gumbel. Hey, Kevin, it's all over at Arizona. Drew Brees trying to rally the New Orleans Saints. Dominique Rogers cromarty puts a stop to that. He'll pick it and return it 28 yards for the touchdown. Arizona, a 10-point winner over the Saints. 30-20 to 20 is the final in the desert, guys. First time since 07 that Brees has had an interception return for a touchdown. Three interceptions on the day for Drew Brees in that game. Wow. wow. Yeah, wow is right. They're trying to figure out if Bush got that first down, and he did. Fantasy numbers around the National Football League today. 
Always fun to watch. McNabb and the Redskins beating Green Bay. Romo in full flower, but a couple of picks. Orton, another big day for Denver, although they lose in Baltimore. Now, Lord, it seemed to always get 300 plus yards. They don't run it, but he's going to throw it at the limit. First and ten. Push. Locked up right there. Castillo is right there with the stop and no gain. We gain Greg Gubble from our CBS studios. Kevin, you were just talking about Tony Romo down in Dallas. Romo to throw. Tennessee's Alteron Werner. The interception returned it to the one. Chris Johnson scored from there. 7.20 to play in the fourth quarter. The Titans lead the Cowboys 27 to 20. Werner made his first career start. The rookie out of UCLA did last week. He is a very good player, getting better each and every week. Michael Griffin said he doesn't play like a rookie. Second and ten, Campbell's hit five in a row and wanting to wind up there, buys some time and throws it away in a flag. He's at the 44-yard line on the near side. Kaysen was watching the fullback. Reese. While the quarterback was still in the pocket, illegal contact, defense, number 20. It's a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Antoine Kaysen playing in the place of the now departed Antonio Cromartie. And you know what? Jason Campbell's got to cut the ball loose when he has a receiver open down the field. You tell me if Hayward Bay at some point didn't come open, even on the second look. See, right now he's even in lead. He's open. Throw the ball down the field. Hayward Bay is a speedy guy. You got to go ahead and take a shot down the field. First and ten. There goes Miller in motion. Bush. You may get a steady diet of him right now as he picks up a meager Michael yard. Bush. Gray at the bottom of the pile to the 44. One thing we all talk about Phillip Rivers. He's going to take shots down the field. He wants it by chunks. I think it separates him from maybe some other quarterbacks. The real good ones are not afraid to take shots down the field when the opportunity presents itself. You can't have that mentality like, hey, I don't want to make a mistake. Phillip Rivers doesn't play with any sign of fear. And I think Jason Campbell's got to challenge this defense the way Phillip Rivers is challenging his. Rookie and left tackle is in. Held here. Second down and nine. Push the block. Miller. <laughs> and then thrown out of bounds by Jammer on the missed tackle by Oliver. Picks up nine and should have the first down to the 46 of the San Diego Chargers. He is a battler. He <laughs> refused to be denied. And he's going to not only pick up the first down, look, he's going to, look at the defender. And he ought to be able to make that tackle. Nope, going to make you miss. <laughs> Won't even allow Quentin Jammer to keep him from getting away. It's just a Y out. They screen off some of the defenders, but he's well aware how far down the field he needs to get to create a new set of down. First and ten. Push. Two-yard gain to the 45-yard line. Kevin. The Raiders have been criticized. People who have coached against them, who have played against them, have been quoted in the national media and talking about the Raiders not being able to finish games. And Tom Cable talked about it. He says, hey, perception is reality. And until we come out and finish against a team like the San Diego Chargers, people are going to always say that. And with eight minutes to go in the ballgame, they have an opportunity to finish strong. Second down and eight. Push the block. Here comes Gray. Nice looking pitch. And a flag thrown. That was Murphy with the grab. Mark him at the 27. It looks like it's going to be on the Raiders. Yeah, Murphy just took Kaysen and threw him. <laughs> he took one of the defenders, just pushed him by. A 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Yep. Replay second down. Now wow. second down and 18 to go. Huge penalty, huge yep. chunk. In terms of throwing you off schedule. Murphy's locked up man-to-man -man coverage against the defensive back at the bottom of the screen. Here we are working right here. Now you tell me if he doesn't take the defensive back, Antoine Kaysen, and just throw him by. There's the push right there. <laughs> and wow. That's why he was so wide open. Give you a much tighter version. There's the push. Clear. Takes the hands and puts it on Kaysen's back and throwing back so he can come to the football making catch. Strickland is the nickel, second down and 18. Miller, that's 
Tackled out of bounds by Kevin Burnett. It's a tight end guarded by a linebacker and a pickup of seven on the play. One more note about finishing off. We know that a player is down, I see, for the Raiders. Is that wide receiver Lewis Murphy? It is. Last year, the Raiders had four fourth quarter comebacks for wins. Trying to do the same against the Chargers today. Time out. Some interesting numbers. Yeah, you're talking about finishing off games. How about the Oakland Raiders in the second half of this ball game? They picked it up on offense. Defense is playing better. And now they've got themselves an opportunity to try to win a football game against their dreaded rival, Philip Rivers of the San Diego Chargers. Five defensive backs on third down and 11. They're holding them off. Good looking catch. That's Miller. Fumbled the ball. If he was down, let's see. The ball was loose. Recovered at the 32. Big time hit there. Put on him by Stephen Cooper. It is Oakland's ball. And look where they will have it. First and 10 at the San Diego 32. <laughs> that was an amazing throw by Campbell. What now watch, watch the pocket presence he had looking down the field. Did you see the time to throw the ball? Two, three defenders coming in to get at Zach Miller. And Zach Miller has himself a presence on this offensive football team for the Raiders. He's probably one of their better ball players. And boy, is he fighting to create positive games. First and ten and Bush. Left by Johnson. Tripped up just enough though as he lands at the 24. Pickup of eight as we pick up Greg Gumbel from New York. Kevin and Solomon, a little back and forth down in Dallas. Tony Romo for Jason Witten. 18 yards and the touchdown. Four and a half minutes to play. They're tied with Tennessee at 27 apiece, guys. Witten's a multi pro bowler for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, when you have tight ends, you talk about even a Zach Miller. It really does help the quarterback to make good play. Mm -hmm. Second and two right here for Kemp. Taking the place of the injured Greg Kelsey. Play clock at five. Bush stuck up inside by Cooper. Green of a yard to the 23. Good read by Bush with the zone blocking in front of him, sticking that foot in the ground and hitting vertical, heading downhill, pressing the line of scrimmage. He's a guy that's trying to pound it out today and doing a really good job at it. 95 yards. Absolutely. 95 yards rushing. And he gives Tom Cable just some physical presence. Terms of their running game. 11th play of the drive, third and one. Campbell takes it himself. <laughs> I told you before they made the trade for Campbell back in April. He had three different offensive systems last four years in Washington. We've got another one here in Oakland. He's had a lot on his plate. It's all about movement on the offensive line. Seems to be a stalemate, but could Campbell find a crease enough? To get to the first down marker. Looks like a decision for Tom Capel. Third down. They got to go in and create some movement up front. Now we're going to have a fourth down call. Cable says we're going to go for it on fourth down. You like the call? I do like the call. Bring out the extra tight end, Myers. And this is going to be their final timeout, Burns. Raiders have none left. They're on the move. A crucial fourth and one coming up. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. And by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. Raiders just burned their last time out. They've got it fourth and one today, Solomon. They've converted fourth and one. They failed on fourth and two. You, you like them going for it here on fourth and one. You have to be aggressive. You can't give the ball back to North Turner and Phillip Rivers in that offense. You may not get another shot. Good fake. That's the backup tight end Myers who blocked the punt earlier today out of bounds at the 11. A catch and run of 12 and a first down for the Raiders on a gutsy play tackle made by Castillo. Even North Turner told us that this is an offense that really has got some bite. It's the fake reverse. He bootlegs out to the right. Look at 
easy toss to Myers for a first down. I thought it was an aggressive play call, well designed by the Raiders offense coordinator, Hugh Jackson. I just think it was absolutely the right call. You've got to attack this Chargers defense. Just a really smart play. First and ten. Bush. Grabbed inside by the rookie Cam Thomas. Six yard gain, put him at the six. The field goal wasn't going to help him, Kevin. And even if they get the touchdown here, I think you've got to go for the two point conversion because you're going to need all the points you can get if your defense has to get back on the field against Phillip Rivers. Tom Cable was already thinking ahead. And you can see North Turner watching the clock. He said, How, how much time is going to be left when we get the ball back? First things first, though, get in the end zone. Huh? Second down and four. Yeah, it looked like they had some movement. Was that Nuwabo? I think it was. On the defensive line, unless he was induced. A lot of penalties in this game, huh? 13th play of the drive. <laughs> and if you're a defensive guy, 300 plus pounds, you're a little bit tired. <laughs> you lose <laughs> focus true. and then you jump <laughs> off sides. Encroachment. Defense, number 91. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line, which is short of the line to gain. It'll be second down. Okemdi Nuwabo. Long drive. And North Turner say we lose it. Our composure. How about the conditioning? On 13, 14 play drive, the big guys tend to wear down. Second down and one. Bush, he's in. And the Raiders have recaptured the lead. Much to the dismay of Chargers defense coordinator Ron Rivera. His linemen are weakened and tired on a 14th play drive. And look at Michael Bush powering it right up the middle where the yards were once hard to come by. You get on a 13 or 14 play drive. Now the heart of that Chargers defense has been weakened by fatigue. Look at the big guys. And they're going for two. And if, I, if I'm the Raiders, I'd have to sense that these guys are worn down a little bit. I'm running it right up the gut yet again. Spread them out and challenge the interior defensive line of the San Diego Chargers. A two-point try. Walker with the block. Now lets his guy go. Incomplete. That's a lot of time to leave on the board for Phillip Rivers. I would have preferred to see the Raiders spread them out and then pound Michael Bush right at that defensive line. They appear to be worn out from fatigue on a 14-play drive. Go ahead and spread them out and run the football. But they elect to roll out to the right, reading only half the field, clearly trying to get the ball to Johnny Lee Higgins. And look at more white jerseys than there are black jerseys in that end zone. Four lead changes. Campbell takes him downfield. There are a couple of big plays on that drive. The tight ends right at the heart of them. Miller had a catch and run of 11 on third down. Myers had a catch and run of 12. Three yard touchdown run by Bush, who is over 100 yards today on the ground. And the Raiders in the fourth lead change today, up by a single point over San Diego, a team that has beaten Solomon 13 consecutive times. And, and here's one of the best passers in the National Football League. One of the best leaders at the quarterback position in Phillip Rivers. Leading the league's number one ranked offense with three minutes and 39 seconds left. Something tells me, <laughs> just a little bird, tells me it may not be enough because not only does he have the ability, he loves to get yards by the chunks and so he can go 80 yards in a hurry. A touchback here. He's been doing it all day. Has Janikowski, and that's he's going to send Sproles five. He's going to bring it out five yards deep in the end zone. And the jump on his back, Tolbert, and 
Huff for right there, 31 yard return. Here comes River. Well, next Sunday, the NFL on CBS rolls out regional games with Ray Lewis and the Ravens taking on Brady and the Pats. Rex Ryan's Jets will tackle Kyle Orton and the Broncos. Jack Welker listing is for the game in your area, all beginning with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern. So here we go, armed with two timeouts, Rivers from his 28, first and 10. They were in position like this last year against the Raiders. Matthews, the rookie in the backfield. Good block by Dabrowski. Chased by Seymour. Rivers gets the first down as he lumbers to the 42-yard line. That's a scamper of 12 yards. And he gets the first as he was knocked out of bounds on the play by McLean. Now, how is Rivers able to run <laughs> so far and so long to pick up a first down when we told you he's not a mobile quarterback? What happens to the Raiders' defense? They play so much man-to-man -man coverage that sooner or later you have to turn your back to the quarterback just to defend your man. And so they don't even see Phillip Rivers running down the field with the football. That's the second longest run of Rivers' career. As long as 15. That was the 14. Scrolls remains first and 10. Rivers. Nice looking catch on the logo right there. That's Floyd. 13-yard pickup by Malcolm Floyd. Over 200 yards today on his seventh reception. Working on Huff. First down. And everything starts with a clean pocket. And see, watch the vision down the field. Laser lock passing from Phillip Rivers. If you are the Raiders and you want to extinguish this potential game-winning drive for the San Diego Chargers, it starts with putting pressure on the quarterback. If you can't pressure Phillip Rivers, you can't stop Phillip Rivers. Leaders in the nickel. First and ten. Matthew. Coverage by McLean. No gain on the play. Out of bounds, 45. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Hey, Kevin, how about the Titans and the Cowboys? The Cowboys assessed a penalty. We're backed up on this kickoff. Mark Mariani returns it 73 yards. A face mask at the end of it pushes it into the red zone. And then Chris Johnson, the second touchdown of the day. Tennessee leads it 34-27, two-minute warning. Mariani's a rookie out of Montana, seventh-round pick, and uh, he returned a kickoff last week, 98 yards for a touchdown for Tennessee. Second and ten here. Thank you, Greg. Floyd. Tackle was made by Mitchell. Gain of five to the 45. We've reached the two-minute warning with Rivers and the Chargers on the move. Well, they're within Hitting's range, as you can see right now, but they really want the touchdown. Yeah, if you know Phillip Rivers the way that I do, <laughs> you know he wants the touchdown. He don't want to leave it up to the kicker. Spoles back there, third and five. Blitz. Buster Davis grabbed by Asamoah down to the 33. Picks up seven on third and five. That is a San Diego first down. Wow, great throw, great catch. And what a close by Nandi Asamoah. Couldn't separate the receiver from the ball. Excellent completion. First down charge. Six defensive backs, first and ten. Short again looking for Buster Davis. He just made his first catch of the day moments ago. It'll be second down and ten. We talked about putting pressure on Philip Rivers. He was forced to elude Richard Seymour and flee out to his left. You know, he's a stationary quarterback. Look at that. 11th career, fourth quarter comeback. But if you force him to change his launch point, force him to move off center, his accuracy tends to decrease. And you can see, even though he had time, he threw the ball at the foot of his intended receiver. So it's all about pressure in the face of Philip Rivers. Second and ten. Good block by Sproles. There's a flag. Floyd was covered by Chris Johnson, who they have been aiming for all day long in the Oakland secondary. All right, Rivers gets the ball out Pass quick. interference. Defense, number 37. The ball we placed at this spot of the foul. Automatic first down. 
Chris Johnson was competing. But the ball was out and it was on its way. He had yet to turn and look back for it. See, River knows he's got to get rid of. It. See, he's not looking back until now. <laughs> wow. First and ten for the Chargers. Don't know that he initiated contact, even though contact had been made. 12 penalties. Ties a season high so far for the Ravens. Five defensive backs. They got one too many out there. First and ten. Tolbert. Some the flag is down at the 27. Some one knocked him off his horse. And Great play. Great play by Namdi Asimov. As he had a blocker on him, still made the tackle. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 85. Ten yard penalty. Replay first down. That's Gates. And you have to set the edge, and there's Gates right there. So see, that's where, see how he hugs him up? That's why they call the holding. Now watch Osmo while he's able to get off that block and still make a tackle. That's just great defense. Raiders can't stop the clock. Chargers, as you can see, with a couple timeouts. First down and 20 right now at the 33. Six defensive backs. Rivers. Pitts. The floor. Johnson covering on the play. Boy, they were bringing the wood that time. Huff was on the blitz from the Raiders secondary. Huff comes off the corner. Look, unblocked. And now if you're Johnson, make this catch. You make that catch for your defense if you're Chris Johnson. <laughs> what a hit on Phillip Rivers. But the ability to close out games is really predicated on closing out plays. And if Chris Johnson can make that catch, the Oakland Raiders are going to preserve a victory. They're going to preserve that lead and come away a winner. Finish off every play. Second down and 20. Blitz again with Huff. Knocked away! That's an incomplete pass. His arm was moving. They pick it up with Tyvon Branch. Although we've heard no whistle, they've not marked him down. There he goes in a foot race with Sproles. That is a touchdown! If it stands. Tom Cable saying stop celebrating. Let's kick the extra point. Here's pressure coming off the corner. Was the arm going forward? The ball went forward. <laughs> so you got to imagine if the if the ball goes forward when he's hit. Then the momentum was the arm going forward. Wow. I can tell you this. What the officials are going to look at was the palm empty as the hand came forward. That one is going to be close. It was a rule, a fumble on the field. Now, see, there's the hit. I think it was an empty palm moving forward. And by the rule, and per what I saw there, they may rule this a fumble. Who's review under two minutes? Branch hoping it sticks. Welcome back as we review the play. You tell us, is this an incompleted pass or is it a fumble? Look, he hits him, but the ball comes out. And if we could stop it a little sooner, we'll tell you that it's an empty palm moving forward. That's what the officials are going to look at. Is the palm empty as the hand goes forward? The quarterback hand was not coming forward when the ball was locked loose. Therefore, it is a fumble. And the Raiders have their first defensive touchdown since 2007. A 64-yard fumble recovery return by Tyvon Branch. See, he's saying that when he was hit, the hand wasn't moving forward. See, ball's out right there. <laughs> but Phillip Rivers continues to try to force it through to move that arm forward. But Tom Cable knows that is a game closer. Can the Raiders finish? I think they just did. We're not writing this one off. 58 seconds left. A lot of things can happen. Phillip Rivers still capable of scoring and scoring quickly. 
Janikowski. 35-27. For the Raiders, who took an initial 12-0 lead, a couple of block punts, one for a safety, one recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. Chargers then went on to score 14 unanswered points. Back and forth we've gone. Rivers has got a couple of touchdown passes today. Tolbert has a touchdown run by San Diego. And Campbell took the place of the injured quarterback Grakowski for the Raiders and has looked pretty sharp today after he lost the job in week two. You can see in the game summary, special teams have plagued the San Diego Chargers once again on the road. Jason Campbell filling in for Bruce Grakowski has come up big, leading them on a drive to take the lead in this game. And so there's been a lot of different things happening, but we're seeing an Oakland Raiders team possibly coming of age under their head coach Tom Cable. He talked about the need to change their identity, the need to be able to close out games against their number one divisional rival, the San Diego Chargers. We've had four lead changes in this game. Chargers had two red zone turnovers early in the contest. And let me take a look at Philip Rivers, who has thrown for 404 yards today. He'll get it with a couple of timeouts. North Turner has got to dial up some plays. Put the game in the hands of his talented quarterback, Philip Rivers. And Rivers got to take some shots down the field. They are touchdown and a two point conversion away from tying up the game. Three touchbacks today for Janikowski. Scrolls will bring it out. Nice tackle made. That's the guy that recovered a ball in the end zone after one of the block punts. That's Ron Cartwright, the ex Redskin. 18 yard return. Rivers on the move. First down and 10. He'll have it with a couple timeouts. His numbers for today. Long way to go. Over 400 yards passing in this game. He had 290 yards by halftime. He's hit on home runs to Malcolm Floyd. He's gone up top to Antonio Gates. He has the arm. He has the weapons. Now he needs the opportunity. Sproles at the side of the quarterback. River six in the secondary. Graham. Nice looking catch up at the 37 yard line. And a 22 yard reception made on the play by Crate Route was there. Spot the ball at the 37 yard line. And tonight on CBS, all new. It all begins with 60 minutes, followed by the new episodes of The Amazing Race and then Undercover Boston, CSI Miami. That's tonight, and it's only on CBS. One timeout remaining for the Chargers. Kevin, so much of the San Diego Chargers pass game is predicated on throwing the ball in the seams, particularly on the vertical route. They want to stretch your zones, but mostly you're going to get man-to-man -man from the Oakland Raiders. But they want to stretch you out, and they want to attack where they feel they have the best matchup advantage. Chargers a single timeout, and the first and 10 from the 37. Looking down, field, he's got Buster Davis who drops the ball in the coverage by Wright at the 22. Just that close. What a throw from Phillip Rivers. And Buster Davis has to finish off this play. Look at this throw while under pressure. Rivers is going to put it on the mark to his receiver. He's working against Route. He got to make that catch. Wow. I think Route might have got a hand up at the last second to tip the ball. Watch that left hand. But the ball is certainly into the body of Buster Davis, who can't finish on the play. And they're prying it out. Wow. It's been seven seasons, seven long years since the Raiders have last beaten San Diego. Leading now, second down and ten. Davis drilled by McLean. Pick up a five to the 42. I think we said it on the previous possession by the San Diego Chargers that if you can't pressure Phillip Rivers you can't stop Phillip Rivers well Michael Huff was able to get the hit that forced the ball out that has allowed the Raiders to take the lead but see the pocket closing in on Rivers he couldn't go down the field with the ball so he had to check it down the better pass rush the Raiders are able to mount against North Turner and his offensive football team the better chances they have of winning the game 
Chargers now on a timeout. You see they got third and five ahead of them. Rivers last year opening weekend on a Monday night brought his Chargers from behind to beat these same Ravens. And these Chargers told us that these 13 straight wins they haven't come easy <laughs> that they've been in close ball games like what we have here today. And now Tom Cable is waiting for his defense to just close it out. One more big play and he has himself a win. Third and five. Knocked away. Beautiful play by Mitchell. Mike Mitchell out of Ohio University. Fourth down. It all starts with pressure on Phillip Rivers. Rivers can't get himself. Look at the pressure. And see, he's able to step in, up in the pocket, but he has to pull himself away from defenders. Mitchell's able to close in. That ball didn't have great velocity on it. Mitchell's able to bat it down. Big play on fourth and five. Blitz. Branch on him. Incomplete. That was fourth down. And on downs, the Chargers give it back to the Raiders. Neither team with a timeout. And seven long years of losses to the Chargers will come to a close. And Tom Cable, who this week said, if we want to be the kind of team we want to be, we have to win this game. And it looks like they're about to do just that. You snap a 13-game losing streak to the team inside your division who's won four, four consecutive division titles. One of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League had the ball in his hands, and yet the Raiders were able to stop him. Boy, were they able to finish today. They ran it enough in the paper and in the national media, and they come up winners. And the Chargers will go to 0-3 on the road. Their nemesis away from San Diego, turnovers and special teams that came back to get them today. For Solomon Wilcox, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Oakland, California. The Raiders have stopped a 13-game losing streak to San Diego, 35-27.